year, bro. Oh, nice. So we've been we've been at the whole podcasting for three years, but this is our going into our second year being in downtown LA. Okay. But we we became I would say like a little bit more mobile. Happy day. What's it called? Happy day. <laughs> they have election lights. Before we get into this podcast, we want to shout out our sponsor, Manscaped.com. Look at everything you can get. The care package that we got includes ball deodorant. For all you fellas, summer's coming, you got to take care of you. You got a ball toner. You got the new lawnmower 4.0. You got a nose hair trimmer. And if you ran out of boxers, man, they'll, they'll hook you up with some too. And for all those people that travel and you travel on vacation or wherever you guys go, little travel bag also. Again, everything just got leveled up. Lawnmower has a built-in light, water resistant, reduces nicks and knacks. Oh my God, bro. Honestly, changed my, changed my life and I promise you, your girl will thank you later when you take care of your own personal hygiene at a different level. Again, use a code right here, ATOS at manscaped.com for 20% off and free shipping. Don't get better than that. Now back to the show. Let's go. Hey, Mr. Abner Morris. Jeez. That's like, hey, before you walked in, that's why we're listening to the cumbias right now, too. I listen to cumbias. He was like, we're, we're, in, we're in a cumbia vibe. But everybody good? You ready, sir? All right. And one, two. It tells a live podcast, the most authentic, most organic podcast I hear, baby. You know, we never miss a Monday. And this time... You know, I'm your host, Dusko. There Everybody's favorite, Mr. Dylan. Yes, sir. And today, by, I don't know, the world just happens, <laughs> dog. The world just happens randomly, and this is less than 48-hour notice, yes. notice kind of work that we that just happened. But we have a three-time champion, yes, Olympic sir. champion. That's right. Born in, in Guadalajara, Jalisco. Sir. Man, Mr. Abner Mar is in the Let's house. Go. Ready to be. Let's go. Thank you for uh, having me on, man. It's, it's crazy. I, I mentioned uh, off air, um, off cameras, I was telling you that I, I want to say that this is the first podcast I've ever done outside of boxing. Yeah. They're all boxing related, nothing to do like, you know, with normal podcasts. And so it's an honor, bro. It's nah, honor man. I appreciate yeah. you giving us that that time and your time. Mm -hmm. And we we did our research. You know, we're, I, would, <laughs> I would say you're our first pro athlete and like okay. also yeah. too so it's like oh, we're okay. popping our cherry in this shit too we're like <laughs> damn make sure we we I'm know but now. Okay. <laughs> yeah but us here at this podcast we love to hear the stories um and we love to tell the stories so we we did our research born in guadalajara jalisco yeah right um came over here at the age of seven, seven years old. right and then if i'm correct if we read correct <laughs> you went back to mexico for boxing. Right, right. And there is, I mean, there's a lot of, obviously a lot of uh, articles written about you over, how, how long was it, was your career in boxing? So, I, I've been boxing my whole life, you know. Uh, my dad was a professional boxer. My older brother boxed. Uh, I come from a big family. We're uh, all together, we're 11. So, yeah. 10 siblings, 11 with me. You're, so, you're big family, same mom and dad, you know. It's, it's rare, because sometimes, like, oh, it's, 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 you know, I'm... So, hijo de la second marriage or whatever, you know, no, yeah. like they're all the same mom and dad. And, uh, yeah, man, just boxing was in, in my blood, and I started boxing at the age of seven, pretty much forced into me because my dad, you know, he was really strict, uh, pretty, pretty much forced me into the sport. And, uh, yeah, man, since seven years old and up till, you know, what I've accomplished so far. Man, so I, I did read in one of the articles that when you went back, to Mexico because of boxing, right. like you, you lived alone, right? Something like that. You literally your your childhood was, I don't I don't know. Can we say take not taken snatched. but yeah. snatched a little bit? But to create something that man, maybe you didn't even anticipate that created this yeah. 
You know big what? platform. Yeah, you're right about that because my mom till this day still cries a little bit about it because she 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 she's like hijo porque te why did I let you go so young so so, so yeah so young like you know yeah. so pretty much you know uh, long story short I, I grew up in the city of Hawaiian Gardens if people don't know Hawaiian Gardens Hawaiian Gardens back then I don't know about now you know I, I don't go to the hood no more <laughs> <laughs> I try to get my little, little you know He's like, I'm change not going that back. now but you know it was it was bad you know it was like yeah. crazy back in the 90s it was it was um it was like really active you know game related um um I got a lot of family from there you know that's where I started and so Coming from Mexico, well, I had a young age. My mom had to work three jobs. At the time, it was just us, my mom and seven of us. Mm -hmm. So my mom had to work a lot, so she wasn't at home a lot. So, you know, basically it was my older brothers taking care of us. So what did that mean? You know, it wasn't much taken care of, you know, because we were on our own. So I would be in the streets a lot. So, you know, it turned from, you know, being in the streets a lot, you know, to being a tagger, to being a skater, to being a, you know, one almost a gang member. Yeah. So the reason for me to go to Mexico at the age of 15 is because of that. Again, my city's really small. I was about to get initiated to the gang, uh, you know, how they did it. And obviously everybody's educated on that. You used to get jumped, you know. Into yeah, the yeah. Mm -hmm. So word got around, hey, Abner, you know, Midas is going to get jumped. To, you know, it was a group of us that were going to get jumped. Be, hey, meet at, you know, at so it's, you know, park at that, this time. And, you know, it's, you know, it's on. So my, my, uh, my mom and my dad at the time, because my dad was already in the picture maybe t uh, two years after we came. My dad, you know, came and, and joined us. Uh, he heard that, you know, I was going to get initiated to a gang. And he said, no, no son of mine is going to be a gang member. You got a lot of talent, son. Like, you know, you got it in you. And I'm sorry, but I'm going to send you to Mexico. And, and, you know, like, you know, some parents be like, you know, they th threaten you with, hey, si no te portas bien, you know, I'm going to send you to Mexico. <laughs> they really did it. Yeah. No, what they say, they si, really did it. si no te portas bien, te va a llevar esa señora que está pasando. And no, no, no. <laughs> but this was like, nah, si no te portas bien, you're fucking I'll send you guys back. <laughs> you're going to be a No, you're out of here. So, yeah, they sent me to Mexico. So they sent my, 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 my butt, you know, my ass to Mexico. And I was over there, man. I went to Guadalajara first. That's where I'm from. And I'm like, man, in a different world because, you know, believe it or not, you come here at the, at the age of seven, you don't remember much from Guadalajara, you're 15 already, and they don't treat you as the Mexican you are, they treat you as a pocho. Yeah. You know, they treat you as Mexican-American, eh, este pocho, eh, you know, so, was, you know, it was like to get uh, accustomed to, to, to even my country, you know, it was, it was, it was tough. How, how was, like, that transition, like, what, what things did you have to do different? Obviously, the, the language. Right. You have that, did you have that, that American accent on you? When you, speak, uh, when you spoke Spanish? Well, you know, obviously my first language being Spanish. Uh, but before was different. And uh, I'm not going to sit here and lie. Before, you know, growing up, I wanted to be a cholo. Yeah. We used to see paisas, like, down here. You know, ah, that's a paisa. You know, we're, you know, we're Chicano, we're cholos. So, for me, it was, it, was, it was a little bit hard. Even though my first language was Spanish, I didn't want to speak it. Believe yeah. it or not, I was like, I was like, yo soy, you know, oh, yo hablo inglés. Eh? Like, yeah. you know. But then I got adapted to it. And I was like, man, you know. Being, being with the tias, being with the relatives, I had to pick up the language, and I did. And and it's, it's you know, a good story from there. Boom, saw that I was good at boxing. From there, moved to Mexico City. In Mexico City, I had my uh, a tryout and uh, made the, uh, the the Olympic team. And yeah. I stayed there for like three, four years, man, in Mexico City. But at, if you can kind of take us a little, little back, how Dylan was saying, at 15, I mean, you're – you're high school already, right? Yeah. You're with your friends. You're around your 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 clique guy and everybody. Yeah. And to just kind of get ripped away like that, did you have some sort of like anger towards your parents? Because were you the, you were the only one out of the eleven that that moved? Well, at the time it was seven of us. Uh, and yeah, I was the only one that got sent because my my older brother he was you know he was a good kid. He, he didn't get into anything. He only was a rebel. He was a rebel back in the days <laughs> with no game member. And, you know, I was the one that kind of, like, started that and being wanted to be a cholo. And so they sent me over there. So, yeah, man, there was a lot, you know, a little bit of anger. I was, like, you know, frustrated. I would call my parents and be like, hey, please, you know, I want to go back. I'm sorry. I'll behave. No, no, you're staying over there. Tough and love. Yeah, tough love. Tough love right? yeah. 
And then, you know, to be honest, too, like, I'm over here being naive, and I'm like, hey, I want to go back. But honestly, I couldn't come back because I didn't have papers. <laughs> so even if I wanted to come back, you know. <laughs> There's no way back, homeboy. But, you know, and I'm saying naive because I, I didn't know what was, like, happening. You know, you're, yeah. Yeah, well, I was 15. They brought me over at 7. I didn't know what was, like, legal, illegal, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, I'm like. And it was a lot easier before, obviously, before. And I'm saying, you know, like, before I used to cross over to through TJ with my high school ID. Easy. I used to come across it. You have an ID. Oh, no, I don't have an ID, sir. I have my, you know, school ID. Okay, come on in. You know, it was a lot easier. <laughs> Let's try it out, then. <laughs> no, 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 don't try it out, no. <laughs> it would not work. Be like, oh, sorry, you cannot go back. I'm sorry. Se me ven la cara de pinche no pare. He tries to show his uh, um, uh, middle school ID. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, when did you graduate? Uh, just last year, sir. Just last year, sir. <laughs> yeah, no. Um, damn, so DF, eh? stayed in the Olympic team. You won your gold in Athens, right? Yeah. So. <clears throat> you, you no, 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 no. I wasn't a gold in Athens. So I went to Athens, Greece, uh, the Olympics. Uh huh. So. Um, so again, you know, I was I was blessed with the with the abilities Ability, and, and yeah, the talent none, of boxing. Everybody thinks they could fight, and everybody's yeah. like, "Man!" And it's I think it's funny when when we watch, especially Hispanics, <laughs> watch from the TV. Ah, que está haciendo ese güey? No, I could do that shit better. And then you start, and then they're just leaning yeah. back and shit. Hey, tira el ya, why is he doing that? Like, you know, hey, like, mira, mira, agáchate. <laughs> they do the they do the duck and like. <laughs> <laughs> so you you're good at this. Yeah. Did you realize at that moment too that like, hey, maybe, maybe this can, this can take me somewhere? I didn't, you know, being, you know, when you're young, you you think you're, you're freaking King Kong, you know, you, you know you're the, it. You own the world, like untouchable, you know, untouchable, exactly. So I was like, I didn't, I didn't care about the sport then, you know. I just wanted to be like somebody. I wanted to do something as far as like you know hood shit, like you know. Yeah. So. When I went to Mexico, I still got into trouble, and and I would I would go to tournaments. They would send me, like force me, and I would win the tournaments. But I wouldn't it would, I wouldn't see it like oh yeah I'm I'm good. And I'm like all right I want a tournament go over here and do this do that, and and honestly I didn't realize I was good at what I was doing until I think for, so first so this is my, my the first tournament I went to uh-huh. believe it true story, so I go and I make the team right. They test me out against the number one uh, national champion there in Mexico. I, in the sparring session, you know, the president, uh, Ricardo Contreras, who's still a friend of mine, who's still the president there, he's like, okay, you're going to spar with the number one uh, guy here. If you spar good, maybe you'll stay. Bro, I beat his ass. <laughs> I beat his ass. And they're like, all right, you're staying. Uh, yeah. Your tournament, um, let me check. Okay, you got a um, world tournament, cadet. Cadet meaning, like, I think it was, like, 16 and under. Oh. Uh-huh. Cadet World Tournament in Kaskemet, Hungary. You're going. It's you and two others from Culiacan. I remember those two guys. You three are going to represent the country, and good luck. And I remember he said, hey, as long as you win one fight, you're good. And I always had the mentality of, like, what the hell? Like, you know, like, I'm taking a fans. Like, yeah. I looked at him like, what the hell? Well, it's kind of like, this that, that, yeah, like, like, that's like, all you think yeah, I'm going to Yeah, like, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, I feel that. Doing, so I'm like, and he, true story, he still tells this story to this in the day. I'm like, sir, you know, con, con todo respeto, you know, with all due respect, I'm not only going to win one fight, I'm going to win the whole tournament. I'm going to bring gold medal and probably bring even best box of that tournament. Ah, he laughed, whatever. Yeah. Bro, I go to Kaskemet Hungary. I beat everyone. I become world champion, youngest world champion in history, um, and cadet. And I brought the trophy of the best boxer of the whole world tournament, bro. Spoke to so assistance, like, bro. Spoke to fucking like, assistance. And I didn't do it because I like I thought I was like I just did it because I knew I can do it, and I did it. I came back, press everywhere. Like what the hell? What did I just do? <laughs> yeah. So there, at that moment, is where I realized, like, damn. I and think this I, is at what age already? At so, I was I was uh, maybe like sixteen. 16 I was sixteen years yeah. old. Yeah. Dang. I was 16 years old. You were on top of the world before you were on top of the world. <laughs> right? Fuck. Yeah, I didn't it, even realize it. If, it, if sources are correct, right. you had over like 100-something. I had 140-some, almost 150 fights. God. Only like 12 losses in amateur. Yeah, that's yeah. always like, damn, Google. Do you know if it's true or not? <laughs> but having so many fights, did you have... 
throughout, if you could try to remember, like, all those fights he had, 140 fights, did you have one fight in particular as an amateur that, or we'll, we'll take two. Right. One that you said, yeah, I'm the fucking best. And then two, like, damn, I don't, I don't know if I can get out of this one this time. One that kind of, like, humbled you down a bit. Okay, so the one I obviously that one uh, that one woke me up and I, after oh. I became you know world Watch champion at, at young age, at the amateurs you know I was like damn you know I got it in me, you know I kept winning tournament after tournament after tournament. I went to Central American Games in San, San Salvador. I won that. I got gold. Came back. Kept going doing tournaments. The one that humbled me was when I went to the Pan American Games in Santo Domingo in uh, uh, Dominican Republic. And I'm like, I'm going to take this, you know. I got a little it's cocky. another one in the bag, yeah. <laughs> Bro. I, got my, I don't, don't want to say I got my ass whooped, but I, I got beaten. A close fight against the best, one of the best uh, champions, an amateur, and then he turned pro. And a lot of people might recognize his name. His name was uh, Guillermo Rigondeaux, which is a Cuban um, four-time Gold medalist. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, Guillermo Rigondeaux. Uh, I lost again against him in the uh, finals. I, I got silver. And that's where I was like, oh, shoot, you know, maybe I'm like not I, that good. <laughs> like, like that. I could be defeated. Yeah. Okay, the way was coming. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, damn. And you're kind of, was throughout this journey of, because I don't, I don't want to diminish and dismiss that you're out there by yourself. Um, I'm sure now at this point you have more people around you and stuff. But uh, your parents were still over here, right? Yeah, all of them. They, could, they couldn't come and visit me because they didn't have yeah, papers. Yeah, either. so how – you're at top of the world. You're being an amateur. You're su fucking succeeding at this point, right? Like thriving. Do at one point you miss, like, seeing your family ringside and stuff like that? Everything, like how did you how do you day, deal with that? Every day I would miss my mom, my dad, my siblings. I would talk on the phone. Hey brothers, I won this. Hey brothers, I did that. But you know I wasn't there. And like I told you, there would be times I would cross over. You know, just yeah. to see my family like months, maybe a year later with my school ID. And, and it was weird. You know, they will see me. My brothers, they'll see me like you know not as a brother. They'll see me as like oh you know here comes the guy like you know the 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 el preferido the the yeah. guy that's doing it. And I got a lot of hatred from my brothers, you know. I don't know why, <laughs> you know, because I didn't share a lot of moments with them, too, you know, yeah. maybe. And, um, but it was all love, you know. It was all love. And, um, you know, but, you know, I missed, I missed my family, my, my parents a lot because, you know, I just had to grow up on my own too fast. Too, too fast. Fifteen, having to pay rent on your, on your own because I already, I was already getting paid. You know, for uh, boxing and the amateur, you know, there was scholarships. You know, hey, yeah. you're at this level, you're getting this much. So I would pay rent, you know, I would get my own food. Like, basically lived on my own, you know. So um, Damn, so did, I grew up I grew up fast, man. What did that teach you then? Because 15, <sighs> you got to vent for yourself out there. <laughs> you got to work, basically. Well, like, well, you know, my work was boxing. Yeah. But, you know, I, I guess, I mean, that's, I just matured really fast, and I, I liked it. I liked it because um, I was But do you like it now or back then? Did you, did you like it also? No, then I didn't, you know. <laughs> then, then I didn't, yeah. I don't know. Like, you know, there's just different times in your life where you just, your mind is different, you know, not as, as, as uh, mature. Uh, my boy can, you know, vouch for me. He was, he was part of it. He lived in Mexico w with me a couple of years. And, you know, I, was, I wasn't always, like, you know, the mature guy. I always wanted to do right. I was always wanted to get in trouble, like, always hot head, you know, always, like, just, you know. I've always been, like, hyper. I've been, like, you know, wanting to do stuff. But, um, but you know, everything, I, I always that, thought that, you know, God wanted me to do something. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of stuff landed on my lap. Like, hey, son, it's right here. Take it, take it. And, I, you know, and I would take it. And I, would, I wouldn't be the guy like, no, no, I would take it. I would take it. And thank God, until it got to a point where I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm getting blessed with this stuff so I can help on my family. Bro, imagine 11, 11 siblings. Like, I would, you know, financially help on my mom, my dad, my brothers. Like, like I'm, 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 you know, not to brag or be that guy, but, you know, I am like the, the pillar. You know, I'm that guy. 
They, they can come for, you know, even to this day, like, hey, son, you know, we, necesitamos un abogado. we need a lawyer, we need this, we need that. Yeah. <laughs> and your brother just got locked up, bailed him out. <laughs> you know, hey, I'm a Latino, it happens, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. And, 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 and I've always thought about that. Like, I am that guy, and I have to be that guy because a lot of people depend on me, not just my family, you know, other, other friends, other family. And, you know, I have to be strong, and I have to do more because... I'm that guy. I'm, obviously, I'm not materialistic, bro. I'm not. I, I feel like that everything I have, I can give out. Mm-hmm. My, hate, my my wife hates me for this. By the way, I'm going to go back and tell you where I met my wife. My, my, my wife hates me for this. She's like, you're like one of those guys that if someone tells you you got a nice jacket, you'll give it to them. I'm like, yeah, why mm-hmm. not? Like, you know, they like it. Give it to them. You know, I could go and buy me another one. Yeah. Like, oh, you got to cherish more what you, what you work for. And like, and she's right, and she's not wrong at that, but I'm just that type of guy that, you know what I'm saying? Like, God has blessed me, like, and if I can bless others, I'll do it. What size no, are you? No, no, <laughs> what, no, size, what size jacket are you right now? You have no idea how many, I, I own like over 100 pair of sunglasses, right? Yeah. And every party I go to and I get drunk, you know, like, and so, hey, bro, badass glasses. And you're at that point where you're fucked up all here. Ch- ah, hey, you take them. Hold on, this is my first. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, invita la fiesta. Yeah, yeah, four, more, four more shots, my guy, four more. <laughs> Not, so, you're a giving dude. Yeah. You're, exactly. you're one of those people that if you have it and someone else may need it more than you, you're, here you go. Bro, money isn't everything. A lot of people, you know, don't see that. A lot, yeah. People say money buys happiness, you know, or people the other way around yeah. say it, money don't buy happiness. But it does to some people. But what kind of happiness, you know, like living in luxury, it's live. Um, buying anything you want, or like uh, to a lot of people, they have different standards. And for you, if that's happiness, all right. For me, happiness is being comfortable, being seeing other people do good. Be me being able to help other people. That's my gratitude. That's my happiness. Yeah. I mean, everybody has a different s- s- understanding of um, being successful and being happy. You know, yeah. so it, it's, it's just enough. it's hard for someone to have an opinion when they. Probably just never been in those type of shoes, you know, yeah. like in the boxing realm and not even just boxing, but in the career type where you're literally per- perfecting a craft and you're in the eyes of the world. And in order for you and <clears throat> I coach high school and I tell the high school kids like, oh, really? What, mm, what do you do? Uh, girls soccer and girls like football this right. year. Okay. So uh, I told them, I was like, when we get to playoffs, in order for people to come and see you, you have to win. Right. The more you win, the more they come and see you. So I feel like that also applies to like boxing. In order for you to get a big payday, you have to you have to be winning and you have to win big and consistently. And I mean, just your your track record of your pro fights too, man. And and your amateur, it, there's there's few losses. Yeah. There's very few losses. It speaks for itself. Type of it thing. speaks for itself, and that's why you are in the position you're in because this is a f- from seven years old. So all the way up up to the end, uh, yeah. to the end, bro. And we'll get to that point uh, for as long as we go. But you mentioned meeting your wife. So, you know, part of growing up fast was that I met my wife in Mexico City right before the Olympics. Uh, she was the secretary. <laughs> she was the secretary of the uh, boxing committee there in, in, for, for Mexico. And she had just started. Um, it was maybe, I want to say, like maybe six or eight Weeks, months. I'm sorry. Before we went to Olympics, yeah. she came into the picture, and I saw her. I laid eye on, lights on her. And I'm like, I love, I like this girl. <laughs> I, I, say, I love you. <laughs> I, like, yeah, I, know, I, I love, love with her instantly. Honestly, I like, you know, just like, yeah. It's like they say, you first. There's a attraction. You you gotta be attracted to the person physically in order for you to make the move. You know, me, I was attracted physically. I was like, oh, I like this girl. You know, let me talk to her. But then I started seeing how the type of girl she was, where she came, like similar situation like me. And she was a smart girl. And I'm like, man. And I guess I was looking also for that mom figure, like someone that can, you know, be there for me, that woman, you know, that, that I didn't have for many years. Mm-hmm. And I decided to pull the plug. right. I mean, the I, I, I decided to. Uh, the rug off your. Yeah, no, no, yeah. to marry her, bro, right away to like, you know, go for it. He shot the shot. He bring. Oh, exactly. he, she I said, "I'm gonna shoot it and <laughs> dunk it, and it's over." Bro, not even a year. I, I asked her if she could marry me. Wait, but so that's how do you how do you start talking to her? 
What do you do? Like, Man, so I need to go back to I'm, Mexico. <laughs> I need to go find me one over there. Because yeah, yeah, your yeah. boy over here, over your there. boy over here started laughing. So, how did? <laughs> how, what's the first conversation happen? Like, like, how did that go? Like, how did you a couple know, months ago? I've always been that type of, you know, you think you're Rico Suave type of guy. You know? Hey, <laughs> look at him. Um, like, hey, um, <laughs> with the glasses, he thought it reminded me of uh, uh, that movie with Will Ferrell. Um, where he goes, you know, I'm, I'm pretty famous, right? You know, like where he says that saying, like, I'm, I'm well known, I'm pretty popular. People talk about me, people know me. So basically, I kind of went in like that, and like, hey, you heard of me, right? I'm, you know, Abramides, like, I'm the one winning all these tournaments. And then she goes, she's like, yeah, yeah, I heard of you. Everybody's talking about you. But that doesn't impress me. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, shoot, you know what I'm saying? Like, right about I love it. I love that. He was on Cloud yeah. 9, and he said, yeah, boom, back yeah, to the yeah, floor yeah. real quick. Yeah, she kind of like, so, so what, you know? Yeah. So I was like, oh, shit, you know, that, that it's not impressing her, <laughs> the fact that, you know, I, I've done this. So I approach her a different way, like, hey, more humble. Like, hey, you know, I'm sorry. Like, one of her cousins, he was one of the trainers. And I'm like, hey, you know, your cousin said that, you know, <laughs> that you like this type of food. That you, you mind if, you know, I could take you out one day and go eat. And she's like, let me think about it. I'll get back at you, you know. <laughs> And she was playing hard again until she finally said yes. You know, I took her out, and then I started walking her to the bus, you know, because whether you take bus, metro, yeah. to everywhere, or taxi, because it's a big city. If you want to drive over there, it's crazy, Mexico City. So I would walk her over to the bus stop every day, and it started like that, going out to the movies. And then eventually, like, hey, can I go with you to, to your house? Uh, I'm going to take the bus with you and to the metro and, you know, go with you. Biggest mistake the first time, bro. She lived really far. <laughs> I get there like bus, taxi, <laughs> metro. Like, oh shit. Hey, he's looking in his pocket like, and he puedo llegar para atrás. Bro, he's just telling I get there. Like, how do I get back? Like, I forgot. I think we all yeah. there's. Every, I think every guy listening has had those moments. All oh, take you home, and then home is like an hour drive That's over there. Be right. like, fuck. And that's what happened to me the first time I took her home. And then I remember I was like, damn, I'm just going to take a cab, a cab, a taxi. And I'm be like, hey, take me to El Comité Olímpico. That's it. Yeah. All right, cool. Well, it was a little drive. But I didn't want to take those, you know, the buzz and you know, all that <laughs> again. But, yeah, man, that's how I started, you know, dating, started dating. And, so now uh, you've been boom. together how, how many 18 years? years? Been together 18 years. It, it's back to what you yeah. said. You, yeah. you grew up with her. Yeah, I grew up, up together. with her. We started together from nothing to, you know, what we accomplished together. 18 years, brother. Uh, I got uh, my daughter, shout out to Emily, my, my oldest. She'll be 17 in April 13, a couple of weeks from now. Ooh. 17. I got a 17-year-old daughter, bro. It's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> how, how is that, bro? Uh, he's, he's like, he's, that's crazy. <laughs> you know, it's crazy, but it's beautiful because when you raise them right, you know what I'm saying? And I've raised Ooh. my daughter really good yeah. to the point where I'm comfortable and I'm like, she can go wherever, and I know she's good because she knows right from wrong. You mm -hmm. know, she knows her values. She knows to value her as a female. Yeah. You know, you, that's that's everything that's has to start. It starts from home. So a lot of these kids that you see outside being bad is like it's not them. It starts from home. The parenting. You know. So for me, it's like I know they say we live in the crazy, ugly world right now, tough. But I'm I'm comfortable to let my my kids out because they're ready. Especially yeah. me, my oldest. You know, we talk a lot, and and you know, we talk about boys. We talk about because she's a cheerleader in her high school. Um, she's always been into sports. A good girl all around, you know. But yeah. again, you know, it goes back to like you know, the mom. The mom is really strict. I'm not the strict guy. I'm honestly the nice guy. No, no. If you're giving out, <laughs> if you're giving out every fucking piece of clothes at a party, you're yeah. not gonna be the strict one. He's exactly one. me at the club. You want a shot? You want yeah. a shot? I'm done. Yeah. 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 As soon as twelve thirty hits, he's just. Paying for everybody's shots. He's <laughs> buying food for everybody. I'm like. I'm not going to lie. I, <laughs> he I looks at me that, like, bro, what the guy. fuck? I'm <laughs> like, what are you doing? He was I like, hey, for not food, they, 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 want, they want a shot. They want a shot. You want one? I'm like. I make friends real quick, bro, especially <laughs> at the club. Yeah? You're that type of guy? Yeah. Yeah, yeah man. man. It's just right. like, I just, that's my, you know, that's me. You know, like yeah. I said, someone I don't know, and I start talking. Sometimes you do get the cold shoulder and they don't talk to you and like whatever. All right, cool. I don't take it personal, you know. Yeah. yeah, you're not. You don't want to talk. 
or all those people will talk. I'm like, man, I'll buy you a drink, man. Yeah. You know, like, I do that because I travel a lot. I travel yeah. a lot. I'm constantly on at the airport at bars, and I'm like, yeah, you know. <laughs> Once you buy him a drink, all right, I could talk to this. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, <laughs> like for real, that's all it took. <laughs> it does not go over our head, man. You've been with your wife for 18 years. <sighs> because of 18 years, man, and you, I, I believe it goes hand in hand with your, with your career. Pro career as a boxer yeah. and boxing in general, marriage life, right. happy wife, happy life. Yeah, yeah. What's that? Hot. <laughs> <laughs> you got to cut that part out. <laughs> I'm just saying, you say that shit. <laughs> hey, um, take, take away the happy dad real quick. <laughs> another thing, another thing. No, <laughs> 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 don't hate us. It was He's, our fault. <laughs> you, you can go home with us, bro. You don't have to go home. <laughs> I threw the alley you, bro. And it was one of those like ah, I should just miss this one. Um, long career, bro, on both ends, and long relationship, relationship even with boxing. And right. how does this work? How do you maintain this? How do you how, how do you manage how, it? Yeah, how do you manage it? Man, it's tough. I you know there's no perfect marriage over there. You know, yeah. out there. We're talking about marriage. We're talking about the sport. Everything that's around it, you know, it's so much. And my, my boy that's behind me, you know, I keep mentioning him because he's been part of my, my life for many years since I, you know, I was an amateur to, to what I am today. Turn that mic to you, my guy. Um, so, right there. Perfect. You know, he's been part of it. So he knows, you know, the struggles and everything I've been through, you know, with life, with marriage and, and the sport. Um, so with my wife, it was, you know, been 18 years, but you know it's been up and down, up and down. Mm-hmm. And again, not there's no there's no such thing as perfect marriage. And there's one thing that a lot of youngsters miss nowadays that they don't try. Mm-hmm. Now is like something's not working out. Oh, maybe it wasn't meant for me. All right, move on. You know what? Let's split. Let's separate. It's not you know it's just not working out. No, make it work. Find the way. What what is wrong with the problem? Make it work. Talk. And I think that's what's kept us this long, you know, because there's a lot of things that I dislike about her. There's a lot of things about that she dislikes about me. There's a lot of things that came with the sport, a lot of fans, girl fans, DMs, um, you know, a lot, you know. Yeah. And I'm, I'm, not, I'm not perfect. I'm not a perfect man. But she, <laughs> not, not, not to say that, you know, she knew what she signed up for because, you know, I, I could have chosen not to be that guy. But she stood there because she understood and she's like, Yo, Ab, and like, you know, you, you got to get better. Like, she was always pushing me, like, you, he's getting to your head. They come down over here, like, a lot of that. So, I, you know, I want to thank her. Thank God that I still have her because I got a really good girl that's really kept me grounded till this day. Um, and, you know, again, and my advice is, like, you know, don't, don't take your, 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 your girl, your, your loved ones for granted, though, especially the ones that have been there for since day one. Yeah. And from from nothing, for I think in the words of Duno, man, from nothing to some. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? And um, I think it, I believe you were still a amateur at this point, but you you mentioned like through the through the bad and good moments. But I right. believe in in if I'm for sure not correct, but <laughs> during your amateur, you suffered one of your first eye injury yeah. that you needed surgery. Right. Would you say that would be like one of the, like one of the losses you had to take throughout your career, and and that had it affected you tremendously, or was there something else that like really affected your boxing and your personal life? You know what? There's a lot of things that, like you mentioned, there's, that people don't know. They just see what you do, what what, what you accomplish. What do you and what do you allow them to see? Yeah, exactly. What I'm, but you know, that first eye injury was was the toughest because I was no one then. I was. Going for my worst, first world title attempt against Gary Peñalosa back in 20, uh, no, 2008. Mm-hmm. 2008, I went to go get my eye checked, and they said, hey, you have a detached retina. I'm like, what the hell is that? Can we put freaking attach it back? You know, <laughs> crazy glue, and, you know, we're back. <laughs> we're you know? back in the breeze. <laughs> hey, po like, vaporu, po vaporu. Yeah, vaporu. Yeah, there's a vaporu underneath <laughs> my feet, and we'll be good. Uh, like, no, nah, man, you know. Think you're done. The doctor was like strict, like, oh, I think your career is done, son. Like, you know, detached right now means you can't fight no more. I'm like, what the hell? At the time, I'm like, I'm, I'm 
must have been like 23, 22, 23, first title Sheesh. attempt. And I'm like, man, what's going on? So imagine from being accomplished as a, an amateur, moving up to pros, um, winning, 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 first title attempt, you're going to get detached right now. It was that during like, training, right? During training, yeah. I was training already with Nacho Verstein in Mexico City. And I didn't even notice it, to be honest. Yeah, I saw a little blurriness, you know, uh, clouds, and I'm like, I didn't pay any, you know, um, any type of attention to that. And boom, that's right. I'm like, man. So my career was over, bro. I'm like, man, what am I going to do? At the time I lived, I remember we lived in this apartment complex with my wife. At the time, just one daughter. I lived in a two-bedroom apartment in the city of Norwalk. And... Bro, I was living for I was living from check to check, you know, at the time. So I wasn't gonna see big checks no more because I wasn't fighting. And, and I wasn't even making that much then. You know, then I was making like fifteen thousand dollars a fight, you know. But that you know, that covered enough for my rent, for my food, for my family, and you know, that Survive. was it. That was that was 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 keeping me alive. Man, that was it. That was done. So man, that was it was a struggle. I started working as a security guard. <laughs> Um, when, you know, after that, I'm like, I think my career's done. I started working as a security guard. I want to thank Mike Vital. He's the one that helped me get that job. I was in Bell Gardens, uh, high school working night shifts, uh, to mm. be a, as a security guard Damn. there. I remember it would rain. It would just be in my car. And the only thing I had to do, be in my car and drive around, drive yeah. around, <laughs> or get off once in a while with the flashlight. Yeah. Yeah. I did that for, you know, for you know, a couple of months. You know, earn a, uh, earn some money because, you know, as a boxer, you, bro, you don't know an, how to do anything else but, you know, boxing. I mean, especially at this point in your career where yeah. you've done it 145, it's amateur, move on to pro, and it's just like, well, what else do I do? I didn't get an education. Yeah. I don't have no degree. I didn't, I don't I didn't have a resume. School, bro. I, I didn't finish high school. I dropped out in ninth grade. I dropped out in ninth grade. Remember, I went to Mexico at the age of 15. Went back to, yeah. I dropped out. Damn, that, that shit went over my head. I'm like, we didn't even say like that. <laughs> school was, look at us fucking not trying got, to be I educated. Out. I got kicked out of high school. So I got kicked out for fighting, for, you know, for being that guy. And yeah. I got sent to continuation school. Uh-huh. And then uh, continuation Damn. school, I never sent work. I never, you know, you're out of here. Yeah. School, you know? So, yeah, I never, never crazy. finished high school. Never, no education. And, and I'm, <laughs> and, um, and I'm, I'm, I'm proud to say it. I'm not proud to say it, but. But I'm not embarrassed to say it, and you there know you I have go. older kids, and and they they laugh, but they're like, they help me, uh, bro. I don't, I can't, I don't know how to write. I can't write that good, you know, because mm-hmm. I can't, I, you know, um, you I big, write how I understand it, you know. Yeah, you you, you know, have a ninth ninth grade education, but, but, but I think the even best, then, like, you yeah. Know. But even but even then, like, let's not let's not dismiss dismiss that because. You have a ninth grade education wise, but you have a lifetime of school where no no one no one teaches you how to pay bills in high school. No one teaches you how to cook your own food, how to travel from here to there by yourself. No one does that. When you live here in the States, I mean I remember times me and my mom would travel on the taxi and the bus. Um, you know, my dad trap taking us everywhere, but I wasn't by myself until 18, I had a car, and now I can move. And then I didn't know how to live on my own until mm. 23 when I had my son. Mm. That's different. I was like, damn, that's how much I got to pay for rent? <laughs> <laughs> that's how much I got to pay to keep the fucking world, light? Right? Even internet? No, my man. Yeah. So, yeah, you know, <laughs> your it, quotes of Nipsey Hussle, one of his songs, man, the best teacher in life is your own experiences. True. So maybe you can't help out your oldest in school-wise. Yeah. But you can help them out, and how you said to teach them with everything around that yeah. school cannot teach you. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that's one thing that I try to implement with my son now too. Like he's knowing a little bit more, and I'm like, man, the best teacher in life is life, bro. Like right. school doesn't teach you nope. a lot of this. Not even entrepreneurship, or to even take a chance on on a career like this. Yeah. And even even with with all this happening. When you took that step back to get a regular job, mm-hmm. as a man, what does this do to you mentally and emotionally? Well, Jeez. you know, emotionally and mentally is like you're broken, you know, because 
your whole life you're thinking like I'm gonna make it, I'm gonna do good, I'm gonna be able to provide, you know, I'm gonna be this guy, and yeah. boom, turns out you're not. <laughs> boom, you know, you're back to being just no one. Well, I don't want to say no one, you know what I'm saying, but just not that guy. And I started working regular jobs, started doing that. The the, uh, the security guard, another a friend got me another job at a uh, cleaning windows at a uh, complex, um, and you know. Uh, as long as I'm, but for me, to, as long as to be that guy to provide, mm-hmm. provide it to, to my wife and to yeah. my kids, I was like, it made me feel good, you know? Yeah. It made me feel good. Um, you know, and I just took it from there until one day my wife told me, like, why, why don't you go get your eye checked again, you know, a year later? Like, maybe, you know, I don't know, maybe it's better. And, and it got strong within, you know, t- the time you being off. And like, yeah. oh, you think so? He's like, yeah, go get it checked. So I go get my eye checked. My doctor at the time was like, man, you know, your eye healed really good, really fast. It's like, bro, he was amazed. I'm like, doc, what, what is that? What do you mean by that? Like, am I going to, you know, my first question, <laughs> am I going to be able to fight? He goes, um, okay, I'm going to take the risk, you know, because they got to sign off on that. Uh, they're taking the, the heat on it. Uh, so he's like, you know what? I'm going to let you fight this fight ever. Try it. Try out. <laughs> you know what Try out your eye. <laughs> <laughs> like, hey, but if, if it doesn't work out, <laughs> hey, 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 he's like, pon el otro ojo, man. That's crazy. Fuck. People don't know, man. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, even both eyes, you know, we're going to get to that. So, you know, I got that opportunity and boom, my back, I'm back on the grind. And that's where the mask, I don't know if you've seen videos of me, I started wearing a bandana with the skull mask. Mm-hmm. That's where that was born. I, I said, I told everybody, I was like, I want to come back with some with the signature, with something that says, hey, I'm back. You know, something that stands out. And yeah, I started walking out with the skull bandana. I was like, oh shit, who is this guy? Why Abner again? Oh, it's mad as he's back. So I started winning, started winning, started winning. And then, you know, I, and one guy that I'm, I'm proud to be that that guy. I know other, other fighters did it, but I did it to a point where, like, you know, it, it became a thing. Yeah. I, I became that guy that started walking out with Banda, with Norteño, mm-hmm. with Grupos. Yeah. And he was like, I think he didn't have said, like, Ariel Camacho. I came out with Ariel Camacho. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha, legend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, and then I right. told, I think in your last fight, it was. Adrian, uh, Adrian, Adrian este. Uh, Chaparro, Chaparro. Chaparro. Yeah. con Enfocado. Yeah, and, okay. and we played it right now in the We're truck. Playing over We're here, playing yeah. in the truck, and I'm just listening because obviously I've heard it before. Then I'm listening to it again, and then I'm just like, "Damn, that's fucking yeah. hard." That's a that's a badass song. So you know, with all El Commander, you know, um, Gerardo Ortiz. Uh, I mean, just a lot, man. Is that the, the, but the one that sticks and everybody still remembers is Ariel Camacho, you know, because mm-hmm. he was a legend, man. That's he a was, legend, man. Rest yeah. in peace. Hell yeah. So, you know, coming, it started that and started doing that. I was, you know, they, they will play in my my my, um, my dressing room. The commission would let me, like, man, Abner, we've never, see, we've never seen this before. Like, you know, like yeah. to this day, they tell me, like, man, we miss those days. You know, I had the banda playing inside the room. And um, yeah, man, just wanted to make the statement that I was I was back little by little. I I I got back. I'm back for sure because I, I mean, anybody can research this, but in order to to be in those type of rooms and live it, so I don't want to throw no shade on nobody. Right. But when you lost right. that first time, right, where um, not not in the ring, but when you lost because of your eye, right. you went a whole year. Did you lose a lot of people that were around you? All of them. <laughs> all of them. Mm. All of, except one. That's my boy right there. Phoenix. Yeah. Yeah. All of them. Except, and he's seen it. And he. There was some I would like. I will. I will. I will block camp and be with these guys, and do other shit. You know what I'm saying? And boom, they left, and then still my boy left. You know. So that's the only one. Uh, Manny. Manny spots so is right there. My boy P. When, He's the one, the real one. So that, when you yeah. come, when you come back, and it, and the reason why I'm asking this is because us, us as as people that always look for answers, when we lose people, like you know, we a lot of people allow them back in there like nothing happened. Right. Like ah oh, man, you know, it's just they just messed up. <laughs> it, was like, a, it was a, it was it was like an era kind yeah. of type of. It's okay, I forgive you. It's, you know, I understand. <laughs> I was no one then. <laughs> yeah. So. And I've been saying it, I've been saying it for the longest. It's like, yo, if if you cannot be here through the good through the bad times, I cannot allow you here in the good times anymore. Exactly. Yeah. Especially at especially at the level you're going at. Right. Like it's not just oh little little boxing matches and the 
UFC gym and, and like little city ones. It's like, nah, man, you're in the biggest stages of the world. How do you how do you manage that type of team to come back? So, you know, and, and you kind of hit it on point because I did kind of allow not the same people, but other people to get back. So after my eye injury, I came back. The first eye injury, I came back and I fought. You know, I became world champion not once, not twice, three times. Mm -hmm. You know, I came, became a three-time world champion. I accomplished a lot. Boom, and I let a lot of people in my circle. A lot, bro. I used to walk. He's not going to let me. Lie. I used to walk around with, like, six, seven guys behind me, people carrying my stuff. Hey, you take the car, go park it. Hey, you got my money, give me my money. Like, a lot of people that nowadays I see... I was like, man, that used to be me, but you know what I'm saying? I just laugh, like, you know, like, I get it. You got a lot of money. You got a lot of power, and that's what you want to do. I get it, you know? But that was me before, you know? Hey, you know, hey, you know, someone's calling me here. Take the phone. You answer, like, you know, stuff like that. Bro, yeah. you pick up the phone. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's on you, you know? It's your what the fuck you doing? Pick yeah, it up you yourself. Know? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you know, I was at that, you know, a point where, you know, um, after, you know, three-time world champion, accomplished a lot, I was with all these musicos, all these Norteños. Um, a lot of people know. To this day, I know. And, yeah, I let them back in my circle. I made the mistake again. And, boom, what happens? <laughs> back to square one. Another detached retina. I had another. Second night, uh, yeah. I, you know, I became world champion. Well, I lost. I lost that. Before that, I had lost. I lost to Johnny Gonzalez. Um, my first defeat. My toughest defeat, I would say, because I got knocked out. Bro, I got knocked out <laughs> in one round. Lights out. Sheesh. In one round. Well, less than one round because the round didn't even finish in that one first round. In the first round, yes. Yeah, and I'm, I'm, I'm proud to say it, and I'm not embarrassed. And when people bring it up, and like, bro, because I know I knew where I was mentally mm -hmm. in that in that moment where I was in that period of time in life, which I wasn't there. You know, I got every, I let everything get to me. Bro, I was I was ranked pound for pound. I was already a three-time world champion. I was one. I'm one of the youngest. I'm still in history. It's on the books. One of the youngest uh, Mexicans to be uh, a three-time division world champion behind Julio Cesar Chavez. Imagine that being in that list. Legendary. Um, so like I was doing so much so quick, um, and again got to my head. I remember uh, he didn't go this time. I went to uh, Tijuana. You know, a lot of people there, my brother stays out there. Uh, so I went to TJ. I got invited to his, you know, fiesta and this, you know, crazy party. And it was um, weeks before the, the big fight. And I was out there having fun, bro. I was out there partying. I was out just, you know, yeah. being crazy, being, you know, just enjoying life. And when they told me, hey, you got a fight coming up, champ. Like, you got to get ready. I'm like, ah, I'm fighting no one, man. He's, I got him. You know, it's an easy fight. And on paper, it was, bro. You know, it was an older guy. He was, like, 30-something at the time. I was I was a three-division three world champion, like, undefeated. Like, yeah. knocked this guy out. So I get back. You know, I, I trained a little bit. Boom, get ready. All right, champ is ready to get to fight. Boom. I knew something was going to happen going into the ring because I felt something. I was like, I didn't feel myself. I remember Regulo Caro walked me out to, to that fight. And I didn't feel the same energy. I didn't feel the same way. Boom, once I get into the ring, all right, cool. I started winning the round, started doing my thing. Pull back, boom, he faked the body shot, hooked me. Boom, I was down. First round, bro, like, you know, like, yo, shit was happening. Yeah. Get up, you know, I tried to, sl I tried to slug it out with him, and he stopped the fight, man. And I was like, damn. So and after that, again, you know, going back to what you asked, the friends are gone, everybody's gone. They're like, ah, oh, this guy sucks. And in boxing, <laughs> we were just talking about that on the way over here. Uh, boxing fans are freaking <laughs> they're <laughs> ours bro they're they're gone like ah <laughs> perdió es bien malo I knew it I knew it he fucking sucks ya ya pasó su tapa la verga ya ya retírate it's not like UFC fight, uh, fans man you lose like I right, you know he's good you, you got it in the next one but nah lost in you know yeah. apart from obviously apart from a loss in paper lost in in the ring yeah. it was a loss psychologically bro um, like you said, you got a lot of hate from the Hispanics. Obviously, everyone's going to hate if yeah. you do something wrong, you know? Well, well, how did you deal with that psychologically, bro? Because it's not just loss on yeah. the ring. Yeah. You know, it's your first loss. Then yeah. how, how'd you come up How'd you come up from that? Yeah, once it woke up. Uh, second time, bro. Oh, well, you know, I took it hard, you know. Social media was barely getting, getting, you know, was like the thing. I remember Instagram was like, 
I barely starting to pick up. I used to get a lot of hate, freaking comments. I you suck. I knew it. You know, you washed. You done. You can't come back. And I've always been mentally strong. Like you know, I'm not gonna let no one or anything get you know get to me. So I'll block it. Block everyone. Block everything. Got into my grind. Got into my groove. And I said, hey, you know what? I'm gonna become world champion. I, I made the change. I went to Robert Garcia at the, in Riverside at RGBA Boxing Gym, and I said, hey. Coach, you know, I want to be combo champion again. That's my guy right there, Robert. And he said, still you still, he, said, he asked, like you said, you, you feel like you still got it, champ? That's all I asked. I know you're a good fighter, but the question is, do you still got it? Do you still feel like you got it? I said, hell yeah. And I'm like, <laughs> and he won't let me know. He'll comment on this. I'm like, hey, I mean, but let me ask you something. I hear, I hear around, you know, I hear, in the, I hear around, people talk a lot and people say that you party too much. I said, you know, is it true? I'm like, Coach, yeah, but, you know, but when it comes to training, like, I really train. All right, cool. Get it. You know, let's do it. Boom, I started training. Boom. One, one fight, two fights with him. And then, boom, I get my title shot against Jesus Cuellar. It turns out that it was an ex-fighter that he had before. And he goes, champ, we got to win this fight. You got to beat this guy. One, because you want to become world champ, but two, yeah. because this guy left oh, It was me. the Argentinian, yeah, huh? Yeah, the Argentinian. Yeah. This guy <laughs> left me. And, you know, I, I made him world champion, and this is going to be a, a sweet fucking victory for me. Yeah. So, boom, I go out there, and I take him out, man. I drop on, I, I become world champion again for the fourth time. So I became four-time world champion in three divisions uh, with that win. It was like, man, that was the big, biggest, biggest victory, mm -hmm. you know, that could ever happen. But, um, you know, kept going, and... And moving on, you know, kept winning other fights. I fought Leo Santa Cruz again. Um, I lost, you know, close fights. And then I get a, tie, uh, uh, a title fight against uh, Tank Davis. Yeah. I was going to fight Tank Davis. And boom, my second detached retina, bro, again during training. Uh, man, I don't know what it is with my eyes, man. Like, I got, like, big eyes, man. Like, beautiful, good, big, brown, tapatio eyes. And and it's like, uh, and that you used to say, like, he said, no inventes, a ti te tiran un yapa al estómago y te lo pegan en los ojos. You know, <laughs> I have some, you know, my eyes are so big. I don't know, man, but I always had problems with my eyes. And so, you know, I had another detached retina there, and that was pretty much it at the end of my career. That was, you know, having, I fought, after that I fought last year. I don't know if yeah. you ever heard without Adrian uh, Chaparro to walk me out. Yeah, that, that's, what, that's one of the things that I told him I really wanted to ask. And it's because... Not the boxing portion of it, but I, I, I believe the, the dog in you where yeah. you're you're literally almost fucking going blind, right? Like, yeah. you could go blind if this goes south. Once again, why do you come back after the second time? Why do you come back one more time? Is it for the fans? Is it for you? Is it because this is how you're going to close that chapter in your life? A good question, man. That's a really good question because obviously the first thought that people think is like, oh, he's coming back for, for the money. Mm -hmm. You know, he probably needs money and he's coming back for that. Number one, the reason is because, I, you, like you said, I wanted, I wanted to go out on my terms. I felt like boxing life, the boxing gods weren't fair to me, you know, because I was in a high point in my life where I was, imagine how much I could have done in the last four years, bro. Yeah. I mean, look what I've accomplished now. But imagine in four years how much more I could have accomplished. You know, maybe a five-time world champion, fought all these greats like Tank Davis, like uh, um, Shakur Stevenson, like David Haney. I would have fought all these guys. I, I would have been in the mix. But I'm not, you know, for a reason. God knows why, you know. And so I, I, I've always been a little frustrated uh, on that sense because, uh, you know, I, I was a badass. I was good, you know, at what I did. Yeah. And God stopped me again for, for a reason. And, you know, I'm just, I mean, I, don't, I even lost your question, bro. Like, you know, it just, like, it kind of, like, lost me because I, you know, always been a little bit of frustration, you know, um, on my end because I never really got to finish. Oh, cause so now I know. So, I, okay, so the reason I came back was because I kind of, I felt like I still had something. Mm -hmm. I felt like I still, maybe I still got something in me and I could, you know, go out there and prove it. I get the opportunity. I fought in September last year. And again, I didn't. I didn't take it serious, bro. I probably trained for that fight. Imagine being out for four years and a half, and for that fight, I trained maybe a month, almost two months. Just that a month, almost two months, just to get ready for after four years and a half. 
And bro, I, I didn't lose. It was a draw, but I almost knocked the guy out. Be- and I got tired because of it, because I didn't train that good. But so the point is, and the, the, the message here is that if you don't fucking take something serious and you don't really want it, you're not going to get it. And that's yeah. what happened with me. I didn't really, you know, so it's either you got the dog in you or you don't anymore, you know, and that's why I'm asking my question. And I just literally sat down with my youngest daughter, who was 11, almost 12 in September, Amber. She's like, Dad, when are you fighting again? Boom, it just hit me. I'm like, I don't know, baby. Like, you don't want to fight anymore? I don't think I do, baby, because I don't think I got it in me anymore. Mm. And she's like, what you mean? It's like, you're good, daddy. You should fight one more time. I just got to find the passion and love already again, you know? Yeah. If I really want to do, because I, I can't go out there and hurt myself. I can't go out there and, um, you know, put my life and my, my, my uh, health in risk because I still have a, a pending surgery in my right eye. I have a cataract which I have to take care of. I have a, a cataract that's pretty much almost blocking my, my vision, so I got to take care of that. And if I don't take care of it, you know, um, you know I'm just not going to see that good. Uh, the thing is that with that, if they remove the cataract, they, they, they put a permanent lens that makes you, that ha- has you look good, but you can't fight anymore because it's, there's lens inside of your eye. Yeah. So I'm either got to make the decision, either I'm going to come back and going to fight or, you know, call it quits. Yeah. Well, let's not forget... God bless me with another thing, which is the commentating, bro. Yeah. Right now I'm doing this mm-hmm. Showtime boxing commentating, which, bro, it's been two years and a half, and I'm there, man. I, I tell people I'm still in the mix. <laughs> yeah. I'm still in the mix. I'm still in the big fights everywhere, but where, where behind the fucking, you know, yeah. ring, I'm calling the fights. I'm, I'm there, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, hey, you know, maybe I'm not be, might not be fighting, but I'm, I'm somewhat, you know, still in these big big fights. Yeah, it, um... You still get to be tied into the one thing you fell in love with first, yeah. and that is boxing, and that is the passion. I mean, that's crazy. Like, your daughter is the one that's telling you and asking you. So I feel like when mm-hmm. when you get those questions from, like, your loved ones and the real, you're just like, damn, you got to ask yourself, like, damn, is that it? Like, mm-hmm. is, do I got to hang it up now? But, I mean, maybe being tied into, in, into commentating, bro, that – that's that's what's keeping you still there and keeping you like, mm, maybe this chapter isn't closed yet. Right. You know what I mean? But, um, man, that's kids, man. Yeah. Kids, no, kids my, get my the kids best are really of you, bro. smart, bro. Like, you know, they ask these tough questions sometimes. Like, man, you know, even through marriage, you know, when we're going at it sometimes, like, dad, you know, they will say, do you still love my mom? You know, if, if you don't, like, I say you guys separate. You know, I say you guys go. It'll be best for you guys. Like, imagine kids talking like that. You're like, and this good, you have Those these are some talks mature ass there. kids, I'll yeah. say that, bro. <laughs> so I have these talks with my daughter and my this this is my twelve year old daughter, Amber, and I sat down with her and she told me, Dad, you still wanna fight, you don't wanna fight, don't fight anymore, you know. But if you still have it, go ahead. But um that's really the the decision I gotta make within the next couple of weeks, you know, whether I wanna continue to fight, if not, just hang him up. Because that's honestly preventing me also from, you know, accomplishing something that I hope I'm no one to to say that I can, but hope that you know I can be um, I could be inducted to the Hall of Fame. But you have to be retired first. Once you're retired officially, then they put your name on the hope on the you know hoping to be uh, inducted to the Hall of Fame. And you know I think I think I can based on what I've accomplished. And if I am, man, that'll be a big blessing. But if I don't, I'll probably go out with one more and go out with the bang, bro. And and keep doing this commentary stuff, which I'm still new to it also. I'm the rookie guy there. Um, you know, I'm just learning day by day. But, yeah. you know, at the same time, I'm doing doing all these big fights, bro. I just did the David Benavides this past weekend. I'm doing Tank Davis coming up, you know, in a couple of weeks. I'm doing the big ones, man. So I'm there and proud to be a Latino to be there, you know. Because That's right, there's not many, not many Latinos, especially in these English networks, you know, doing yeah. the commentary. So, you know, it's... it's it's a proud moment for myself, you know, and, and for my culture and my Latinos out there. I love that. I yeah. love that. I so, love that. So, life after boxing, is it very curious? Because we're not fucking boxers. We're, <laughs> we're, <laughs> we Maybe. see it through the TV like, ah, I can, I can duck down. I can hit that little. Maybe at 3 a.m. after the club, you know. <laughs> fuck it. <laughs> to be like those videos. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> um, is it, is it hard? 
to, I know you kind of just said it right now, but I want to put this on camera. Right. Is it hard to have a career outside of the ring? After boxing. After boxing. A career, yes, it is. It is because a lot of us boxers are high percentage. You know, we didn't finish high school. We're not well-educated. And it's, you know, to get another career um, around that circle, yeah, it's it's a little bit hard. But yes and no, because now everything's so accessible. Now, yeah. you know, social media, you know, things like this, podcasts, talk about boxing, you know, you know, things like that, you know, maybe maybe it is a lot easier. But um but us boxers is like or any any um athlete, after you're done with your career, it's like you're at home, bro, sitting down, yeah, you made money, yeah, you're comfortable, but it's like, man, what's next? What's next, yeah. What's next? What do I do? So like, you know, I remember, you know, when I first you know quote unquote, you know, retired and I would call my boy and I'm like, Hey, I'm going here, I'm going there. It's like Oh, don't don't you got anything to do? It's so early. I'm like, nah, no, not really. I don't have anything to do. <laughs> like, what's the, today's agenda? <laughs> Shit, nothing. Okay. I'm employed friend at 3 p.m. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Yeah. And yeah, like how did so for you personally, how how do you deal with the first, I don't know, is it weeks that you go through it? And a right. month? How do you do how did you deal with that? Not good. Well, good because I just started going out a lot, you know. I made the I started going out too much. Um, I didn't have anything to do. Like, hey, call up the boys. Hey, let's let's hang out. You know, there's nothing to do. Let's go here. Let's go there. Yeah. And get back home. And you know, <laughs> and you know, not be good. But you know, um, but yeah, no, I just um, I couldn't adapt to like the fact that I was in. I didn't have a routine like I did when I was training. You know, yeah. train is like get up, go to. Go run, go to the gym, eat well, sleep, go work out again, go to sleep, and do it all over. You know, routine. Once you're done, it's like, man, what do I do now? Until you know, boom, it hits you, and it's like, hey, it's time to, yeah, your career is done, uh, done as a professional athlete, boxer. But guess what's next? A professional father. You know what I'm saying? It's, hey, you know, you gotta be at, be the best. So my thing every day, every day, I get up and I take my kids to school. Every day, those are moments you cannot like me. Those are they're golden, you know. Take my kids to school. We got they make fun of me because I have uh, this thing. It's like uh, I wake up and I do a story, and it's like it goes, uh, "Yo, what up, what up?" It's you know, top of the morning, everyone. The top of the morning is like, yeah. "Dad, you're not gonna do your top of the morning today." <laughs> they, <laughs> like, top of the morning, taking my kids to school. Emily, Amber, hey, you know, and they see my kids grow up. You know, a lot of uh, people that have been following me for so long. Yeah. But right now, it's my 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 main goal is uh, maybe not to be the best at boxing, become world champion again, um, but to be the best dad and, and get my kids to be the best versions of themselves. And and, and as the girls, you know, being a girl dad is you know it's not that easy. So so it's tough. So right now, you know, that's that's my homework. You know, being the best dad that's that I can be. That's amazing. Yeah. That that. I we forgot about that. Right? <laughs> we, no, because even at, I know at the beginning you mentioned your daughter's house, like, and that she was turning seventeen. Yeah. Like, damn, how'd you deal with the? Has boys came into the picture? How'd you? How did that? How did he can that box, happen? bro? He can box. Yeah, what like ten, 10 seconds. Bodies. <laughs> bodies. No, you know what? Um, I don't want to be that dad. You know, mm. I want to be that dad that my daughters will be afraid to bring a guy to the house or can't talk to me about boys. Like, I can't because you block. You block them from, you know, being open to you. Yeah. And so I'm not. I'm like, hey, who, so who are you talking today? Or who do you think is cute? Or, you know, you have to be that, oh, really that? Oh, you know what? He's cute, but yeah, he's he's, uh, he's mean. Or he's like, things like that. So, you know, you just got to, as a man, you got to, hey, babe, you know, you just got to be careful because she likes athletes. I'm like, oh, I like this basketball player. I like this football player. Like, you know, a lot of these nowadays, you know, every day, but always, like, a lot of these boys, they, they play with girls. They, they yeah. say they're talking to you, and then talking to, and then one time the last one was like, "Yeah, you're right, Dad. He, I found out that he was talking to so many girls, and but I'm over him. I'm like, well, good, baby, you know, you know things like yeah. that, you know. But I, I, I don't want to be a close book. I don't want them to be a close book. I want them to be as open as they can, mm -hmm. and, and share whatever they can. And I saw something on the internet the other day that you know really, and it's just recent too. It was like made me understand and come out, come a different way. You know, towards my daughter, daughters. Before it was like, "Hey, baby, how was school?" 
And the guy say, like, hey, how was school? I was like, yeah, it becomes rep- repetitive. You know, if you do that every day, they're just going to tell you whatever. You know, like, yeah. But if you go and tell them, hey, baby, what was the highlight, highlight of your day? What, 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 did you, what stand, stood out the most of your day? What did you do that you, made you feel good? And then you get their attention right away. Believe me, they'll be like, oh, you know what? Did? Yeah, today, like, all my friends did this, or I said this. Or and I do that now. Hey, baby, so um, what was the highlight of your day? Hey, baby, what, do, what was the best thing you did today? Or, you know, or what was the worst? And, like, and I have the, dad, you know, you got to, you know, girls, like, they talk and talk and talk. <laughs> Let me and, start. You know, yeah, yeah. And, uh. you know, just listen, listen. And, you know, I, I, I'm trying to be that dad. I'm not perfect, but, you know, I'm trying to become a, a, good, a good dad. The only thing everybody can wish for is just at least as long as you give effort. And um, I know Dylan wanted to bring something up today. So, um, oh yeah, I was telling him about one thing about I like about you, bro. And I know you've been on the top, bro. You've been all the way up here. You never forget where you came from, bro. You're always out here helping the community out. Um, I saw that you go to school to talk about bowling. Yeah. Um, how is that like? What 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 exactly? What is that like, bro? Well, you know, I do. I go to schools, I talk about bullying, I go to schools, I, I do um, backpack giveaways, I've done, you know, turkey drives, I do, you know, uh, Christmas, you know, get, like, I, I try to give back to the community, and I always tell people, why, they ask, why, why do you do that, like, yeah. you know, I'm like, why, because I can, and because I need to, and I have to, because I come from that, bro, I was one of those kids standing in line waiting to get a toy, because my parents couldn't afford one, you know, I was one of those kids going to church on on Turkey Day and Thanksgiving because my parents didn't have money for a turkey or a Thanksgiving and we will stand in line to get a, a plate. You know, I was one of those kids that didn't have books. So, you know, hey, you know, give us books, you know. So I was one of them. So best feeling in the world is to give back, to give back as much as I can um, in, in, in life and, you know, to these unfortunate kids. So the bullying part, um, <laughs> My kids know this, and I, you know, it's like, Dad, I hate bullies. Were you ever a bully? <laughs> He's like, he puts his head down. Like, oh, and let's talk about like, something and else. Then, and I tell him, you know what? As small as you see me or whatever, I was a bully, you know, because you know we used to hang around in groups. Like we used to, you know, we used to be like the cool guys, tough guys. So we used to see these nerdy guys and push them around, and you know, take their backpacks away or glasses away, and yeah. you know, we were those guys. And I, you know, I'm not proud to say it, but we were. But now I'm. I'm I want to be that, you know, the guy that tells, like, hey, you got to stand up for yourself. You know, you got, you can't let people take advantage of you or, or punk you or, you know, make you feel less um, because, you know, there's no such thing, man. You're better than these guys. And, you know, a lot of the ca- the reasons why we become bullies is because there's problems at home. You know, I come from a broken home. You know, I come from a broken home, you know. Uh, so a lot of these kids that they're bullies and do all this, they come from broken homes, man. They don't know better. better. They, they, they have so much going on at home, and they take it out on kids or in school, take it out on a lot of people in school, and, you know, I was one of them. I, w- I remember I used to get, um, I used to get make fun of and, and when I was in high school here or in school, elementary and, and in middle school. They would make fun of us, and that's why I used to get in a lot of fights. They're like, ah, ahí va el este. They will make fun of us because they'll see my dad and mom fight in the street, you know. Papa iba correctando tu mamá, o tu mamá iba correctando tu mamá, and yeah. stuff like that, and, you know, like, oh, I'll be embarrassed, and, like, you know, my parents fighting, and, and you know, um, things like that, or wearing ugly shoes, or tore up with whole shirt, shirts, uh, being poor, and, like, you make make fun of me, so that made me the tough guy, you know, I was like, oh, I'm not gonna let this, so, <laughs> I guess, you know, again, that's where it comes from, being a broken home, being, you know, unfortunate, and taking it out on, on the world. And you know, I think that's that's where the bullying starts. So, so I, I try to educate these kids, and you know, the talks I have with them is like, you know, try to understand it sometimes, and like, like, hey, you know what? <laughs> as corny as it sounds, like, you know, like, hey, you know, don't take it out on me. Hey, if you're going through a bad time, talk to me. You know, because a lot of us are, you know, not not just them. A lot of us are going. There's a lot of mental, you know, um, a lot of people go through these. Um, mental health, you know, issues, you know, a lot of stuff, a lot of, you know, a lot of people taking their lives away. I um, mean, there's so much going on in the world, man, that, you know, that, could, that needs to be addressed. And, you know, some people just don't understand, you know, yeah. understand the human side of, you know, what, what people are going through and just are, are easy to 
throw point the finger and and and, uh, and say something. Yeah, I think uh, we we had actually a conversation with one of our guys in San Diego, Jose, and one of the questions that we had we asked that day was like, do we blame our parents for our bad bad mental health? And it's being confident to to speak about what's going on, you know, uh, being confident and expressing our feelings with even our boys. Mm-hmm. Can I can I talk to you really about what's happening with me and what's what's in my mind right now? And, you know, Dylan said it best. Like, I can't, and I've t- I even told my parents after this, like, I can't, I can't fault you for this. Like, you did the best that you could from what you know. Yeah. Coming from Michoacan to here, being providers right away because I think my dad is the second oldest to eight, and then my mom is one of the youngest to ten. Okay. So, like, yeah. but it's, no one, no one speaks about this. Yeah. No one talks about, hey, can are you are you feeling depressed right now? What is depression? <laughs> depression. Levantate la verga, ve. Trabaja, and it's just like, oh shit. And, but now in in our Hispanic community, and what we're doing here is, let let's talk about this. Let's create this safe space. And maybe this video isn't for that person, but this video can impact the person that needs to hear it. Yeah. And you know what? That's what when didn't brings this up, like. Maybe you you didn't. I don't know if you figured out your purpose in in life, but boxing provided the platform, yeah. and it provided it provided everything else. And now you can share all this light and give to all these other people that, like you said, that were once in your shoes when you were younger. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And I I have to read it because I don't know if it's <laughs> I don't know if it's correct, but um, there was an interview that that you had, and I believe is I think once you became world champion. And then you had said, I am the person I am now because of everything I went through as a child. True. 100%. That's 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 one thing I, I really, I associate with you a lot, bro. Like, I, I, I relate to you a lot because I, I was the kid going to the backpack giveaways, you know, getting uh, school materials from, from people from the school, um, going to the church to get turkey, you know, so my mom can make something at least for, for you know, for Thanksgiving. Mm-hmm. So that's why I wanted to bring that up because I was that kid. Um, they used to make fun of me in in uh, elementary because yeah. I would wear the same shoes year after year, and it was like, "Yo, homeboy can't buy no more shoes," you know. Yeah. And it's like, "Yo, like my parents didn't really have enough, bro. They came, they immigrated from Mexico here, and we barely had enough just to pay for rent." And I I think that played a big role on my parents too because it's like, "Yo, I can't give my my child the the life they wanted." when I'm working my ass off barely to pay rent, you know? Yeah. So it's like, that's 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 why I kind of relate to you a lot, bro. Oh, thank you, bro. And I do appreciate you, and I thank you for all you do, bro. Not just, you know, for all those kids that you're helping out there, but, you know, for your inner self too, bro. Yeah. You know, healing that inner child for yourself too. So thank you, bro. I appreciate oh, it. Thank you, bro. Have you, have you healed that part? I'm glad you said the inner <laughs> child. Have, yeah. have, you, have you, do you think you've healed that part? part of you as a young 15 year old in Mexico creating a career out of them um, aspiration no I don't think I have mm. I don't think I have. A lot, I have we all have I have a lot of problems you know yeah I might not show it you know on cameras or out in the world but I have a inner a lot of inner problems a lot of things that I go through demons that I fight through you know that people don't know you know, I've been through a lot, you know, throughout my life, uh, you know, from, you know, that we didn't share here, you know, the, the parentings, the brothers, the gangs, the, like a lot of the stuff, you know what I'm saying, um, that, you know, I still haven't healed, and that brings a lot of problems to my life right now, you know, uh, as, as a marriage also, and that I still, like, she, you know, my wife told me, you know, like, you have to talk about it, but like you mentioned, I grew up in a, a home where know about uh, psychologists we you know parents like it's pa locos you know and, yeah. uh, I didn't I don't I didn't, until this day I don't believe like go see a psychologist you know go talk to someone and like ah what is that man? they just want your money yeah. this and that they just want they'll hear you and say whatever you want to uh, hear and that's it 
you know, and it's funny because my daughters, they, they see psychologists, you know, not because they need it, but maybe, yeah, maybe because they, but they're, my wife is like, they need it, you know, they need to, because we both come from broken homes. Yeah. They see what happens sometimes, sometimes at home and they need to talk to, to people, you know? So my kids, they, they see psychologists, but when it comes to me, I, I don't because I'm still not having healed. I haven't really let out what has, you know, what I went through, you know, what has gone and still going through, you know, mm-hmm. and, and I've gone through a lot, you know, from, you know, Growing up to what I've seen till this day, what I'm helping, what I'm doing, what I'm seeing, what I'm, what I'm, I'm, I'm dealing with, you know, um, the, the fact that, you know, what I touched a little bit on, on, on the fact that, you know, I'm still not happy and comfortable. The fact that, you know, it's been five years since I last fought and well, you know, last fought last year, but the fact that, you know, I'm still not in the circle anymore. Well, why, you know, why, you know, yeah. why isn't, you know, things like that. But you feel like you have to. In order for you to be Abner, like, you still have to be in that spotlight? Or if you can put it in your terms, like, who do you think, who do you know is Abner? I don't even know. I can't answer that, guys, because I don't, I don't know who I am. Still, I haven't found myself, you know. Um, I'm, I'm Abner Mata is the, the guy that, you know, was raised well. You know, I'm, I'm really, I got manners, you know, I, I Try to help out the pe- help out the people because I, I got a good heart. Um, um, but honestly, I, I'm, I'm still like I don't know why I was placed in this world. What, what am I supposed to do? You know, I got a family now. Provide to them. Yeah, it's it's part of yeah. you know circle cycle. Like you're supposed to like that's what you're supposed to do. Yeah, your father you're supposed to care of your family, your wife, your kids. But you know, my purpose I still haven't really found it. You know, I, yeah, I got a good job, great job actually. You know, Showtime. And, and I'm blessed and I'm fortunate and I'm grateful for it. And I'm working actually really hard to become the best at it. Yeah. But is that my purpose? Is that what I'm supposed to do? I don't know. You know, is there something else? I don't know what's going to come from me. You know? You're and you're helping a lot a lot of kids and, and the giveaways and, and talking about bullying and stuff. But what could, what could you personally say, like, about people that, mental health even speaking yeah. to a young 15 year old man like yeah. what could you tell yourself like if you're speaking back to a young 15 year old 16 year old abner like what do you tell him now that you're here yeah. well you know I, i've never been bullied physically because i've always been that guy i always stood my ground yeah. i was like well but then life it, life has sometimes bullies you you know yeah like, exactly you know where i'm at right now like oh shit you know what i'm saying so my advice to young kids that are going through like maybe is that what you're saying? Like someone that's bullying them at school, or or nah, not not bu- not bullying stuff. because th- I I think now where we're sh- where I want to shift this into really fast is what do you tell? In a better question, if you could talk back to a 15 year old you, mm-hmm. what can you tell them? Oh man, what would I tell myself? Believe in, I don't know, be simple as believe in yourself. Because I, 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 till this day, I've never believed in myself. You know, I really never believed in myself. I've always been thoughtful about, like, you know, going into, I don't know, just believe in yourself and, and just know that, you know, whatever, whatever is going to happen is, is because it was meant to happen that way. And the reason I want to tell myself this, if I were 15, because I still haven't accepted that to this day, you know. That what has happened today to this day is what is supposed to happen. I don't know if it makes sense, but you know, I'm still in that process where I'm trying to understand why we you know why I didn't I wasn't able to accomplish more things. Um, you know, why wasn't I given the opportunity to to continue to my, my boxing career, you know? Um, just so much, you know. And like you said, like I told you, and like you tell me, like, you know, we're talking about there's a lot of healing that I need to do you know, um, going on forward because um, I still haven't, you know, because I still can't to this day understand why I'm, uh, I, and I know why, you know, because of my eye and because of, you know, my, 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 my surgery and stuff, but 
You know what I'm saying? But out of like all these boxers, why me? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, why me? Like, you know, like I had some going for me. But again, you know, I accomplished a lot and I should be happy with what I accomplished already. But I'm still, you know, unfortunately, I'm still not, you know, I'm still not. I think I could have done more. So, um, you know, it's a, it's a working process, bro. It's a working process for me. You know? No, I appreciate Understanding that. Understanding what, 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 the whys and, you know, what, what happens after this. Yeah, and I mean, you're saying it yourself. There's, there's a lot of internal work that has to be done. And, I mean, how we always tell everybody, internal work happens whenever you want it to happen. Yeah. You know what I mean? I can't tell you, all right, fool, like, it's time right now. It's like, nah, man. When if you're tired of this now, cool, let's work on it. You know, however you need to do it. Or help, but it's to each their own, you know what I mean? But we're a product of our environment, too, and, and we get to take whatever that happened to us, and we apply it to our life personally. And, you know, you mentioned briefly outside of this was, you know, now after boxing, like, it got into your entrepreneurship, right. you know, making money outside of the boxing ring, businesses, you know, you you drive a fucking sick ass Lamborghini, and, and it's and crazy because I, I have you know I have that like I you know I I invested in um, um, real estate you know I have apartments duplexes you know uh, I had a restaurant which I just sold I'm I'm working on a new project right now that excites me yeah. you know I just had this talk yesterday literally yesterday we sat down and we went through numbers and what's gonna happen is it looks good you know it looks lucrative but you know I'm still mad at the fact that I didn't. Finish what I had to, you know, but, you know, again, you know, going back, but, yeah. but it's me, it's just, I, I just want to, I just want to seal, and, but that's money, bro, that's, you know, having my family, my kids, um, land in something where they're comfortable, you know, and, you know, their kids and stuff like that, but, then comes the, you know, where are you? What's next? You know, my boy the other day is like, bro, you got to look for a hobby or something, you know, do something <laughs> like, you know, and I yeah. do. I do gotta look for some, you know, the else than other than you know the, the 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 you know the the apartments, the, the restaurant, the this, the that. You know, I gotta find something that really I really love and really enjoy. Can it be the commentating? Yeah, I'm working on that. You know, I'm new to it. You know, I gotta get better at it. But I I feel like you know there's there's um there's gotta be maybe this next fight and we'll close the chapter and be like that, that, that was it. Yeah, that's what I what I had to do. And, I think it's like one of those scenes, like if, if you're going to, I mean, this is an outside in, right? Outside in, everybody can have an opinion, but like, I think when you come with a gen, like a real genuine approach, it's just like, if this was our last episode, like, how do we want to leave this? And it's like, bro, right. put everything you fucking can into this, leave no stone unturned, right. lock in for the amount of time you're going to do it. So when you finish, it's like, it's like in the movies, you finish like the Rocky ones, he's done. He's not crying or anything. He's just like, oh, yeah, like, I did it. I, how you said it, I walk out on my terms and not on anybody else's. But I do want to say, like, at one point, you, instead of putting yourself, because I'm for sure, I can, I'm pretty sure we could agree to this. In the list of who comes first, you're nowhere near their top five. Like, you're <laughs> not in a, even a top two or top three. You're, I feel like you put yourself at the last of the last, because you're just like, I'm, I could survive. I always, uh, what do you mean by that? Like, I always put other people before me. Everybody else comes first. Yeah. Everybody else, no I matter, like, a, like I'm, it's your it's your wife, your kids, and then everything else that falls into line and still Abner is, you know, because it, uh, maybe it comes with the resemblance of fighting. Uh, I'll be good. I got hit to, the, I got hit this, next I'll come back. Yeah. And it's like, it's it's another round, bro. So That's it's like, crazy. This this is this is this is boxing, right? Your life is boxing. Yeah. All the ch the twelve rounds is the twelve chapters of your life. So when are you ready to? All right, man, it's me. Yeah. It's all or nothing, right? Like, you know those decisions where you had the tie or you had those little couple losses. You know, very few losses. Yeah. What what would you have? What could you have done if you would have? What would it have been if you would have put yourself first and you would have locked in and then no one else mattered but your craft and you. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. because at the end of the day, how you, how you, we've all realized it. Me and him have realized this too. Like, when everything is up and up and going, and everything's running smoothly. Everybody's around. Everybody's supporting. Mm -hmm. And then that moment where you lose, right. where's everybody to turn to? Who do I lean on now? I can't lean on nobody but me. Mm -hmm. 
It's like that. I don't know if you've seen that video of Post Malone. Like, oh, who got you out of depression? Me. Yeah. Like, I had nobody but me. Because I feel like at the end of the day, like he said it too, like, I can, no one can take me out of this unless I'm ready for it. Right. So if you, if I'm ready for it, cool, let's go. But if not, then I'm going to be with my hand extended and you're not going to be ready to go at all. You know what I mean? So nah, I, I'm, I want to say I'm pretty sure after this, bro, you're going to start doing internal work and yeah. prepare for that last fight that, that I feel like you're the one that, that wants to have it because it's, it's on you. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and it's, 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 it's up to nobody. Yeah. It's up to nobody. It's, a, it's up to Abner himself. Yeah. So he always like, you know, it's not, los hom los hombres no llores, es maricas, you know, like, estás llorando, güey. Te dejo tu puta madre. Estás llorando, ahorita tú pa' que llores, cabrón. Right? Every time you start crying, sigue llorando. Todavía te pa' que llores. Vente pa' acá, la verga. Le dices, ahorita vas a dormir calentito, cabrón. No, you gotta tell, you gotta tell everybody in Abner. You would get your ass beat after the after soccer game. Oh, shit. My dad was... My dad changed a lot, thank God. But um, my dad was... That's a, a changed man. I love that guy. Shout out, Carlos. My dad used to get his ass beat hard by his, his dad. Um, okay. And obviously, he grew up with that. Okay. So um, I'm the second oldest. I'm the middle child. And every time he would he would go play soccer, I was like... To be honest, I'm not going to lie. I was, I was like, what, 9, 10? And he would play soccer and he would lose the soccer match. I would get my ass beat after Still that. Still take shit. it out on you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, bro, you didn't want to say shit from the field to the car. If you said something, you want to get to the car, what? Right there on the spot. Like, fuck, bro. Like, shit. Uh, yes, that's, that's how it was back then. I mean, parents would, well, I mean, till they, today, too. I mean, these days, people, parents take it out on, you know, the kids sometimes. And it's yeah. not fair. Yeah, I got my ass whooped many times from my parents, you know. They used to have, they used to have fights and, you know, the fight would end it, will end, and my, my mom would take it out on me, or oh, vice versa, my dad would take it out on us, you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, it's not, <laughs> yeah, it was, it was bad, man. And so, I mean, we're, we're here, a podcast, we're always full of quotes, man, and we always look for fucking quotes. We, even on social media, we're scrolling through fucking two hours on TikTok, and I have IG one of his reels. quotes written down. I have yeah. one of your quotes uh, written down. Damn, you gonna say that one today? Uh, we'll, we'll have you say that one or whatever you, I got a different one for today. All right, all right. I'll say yours some wait, other time. So, wait, so read the one that, that he had wrote then. I'll read, I'll read yours. Let's see if you remember. Let's give him a friendly reminder, my guy. A friendly that are, reminder. You know? Uh, give me a second. Give me a Look second. at her messages right now. <laughs> not her clothes. Yeah, not her clothes. <laughs> this ain't working now. Just, oh, shit. Oh, oh, no, that's the wrong one. That's the wrong one. Yeah, we need okay. to talk. Um, one of your quotes was, losers fail because of the circumstances and winners when, despite the circumstances, that was one of his quotes. Yeah. She was hard. She was hard, bro. Damn. Talk about that. <laughs> Talk, what Talk do you mean by that? that? What do you mean by that, my guy? Yeah, that's true, man. You make you make of you make of what you make. You know, at the time, you know, some people make excuses. You know, basically, pretty much. You know, the circumstances. Like, oh, I because I, bro, I broke. I come from a broken home. I am. And I have siblings that are game members that are doing this, and a lot of people know, you know, it's, it's not, it's not, I'm not hiding this, you know. I got brothers, uh, you know, especially one that, you know, it's not doing so good, but, you know, he burned himself, you know, out on social media and what he does. And it's like, how is it that you both come from the same thing and he's over here doing this and you're over here doing that? It's like, you know, it's what you make with, you know, what you have, you know. My, what I made of hard times is wanting to be someone hard, something good. And other people's like, oh, you know, I come from a broken home. I come from this. Uh, I have to be this. So I have to be, uh, this is what I was meant to be because, you know, I didn't, I wasn't given the opportunity. Nah, man, you work with what you have and, you know, take it from there. And that's what I say, you know. A lot of, anyone can make excuses. Yeah. You know, it's what you make of them. You know, that's it. Is there, is there like an actual quote that you resent with, like day in, day out now? Nah, man, I, there's, there's no quotes, you know, because uh, for me it's an everyday thing you know every day is a different it's a different chapter and a different day um of living way of living Man. i love that Dude, what did you have today my guy what did i have today guys no, no, I nah i'm just playing <laughs> um this is a pretty good quote it's short it's super short right. but i hope it doesn't go over people's heads and it says as long as you're talking you're not listening mm. you know exactly yeah so 
Sometimes, yeah. You got to listen, man. Sometimes you got to shut the fuck up and listen yeah, to what's around Sometimes you got to shut the fuck up. Yeah, nah, man. And it's for like your own advice. Huh? It's, 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 you know, it's, have you met those guys that give the best advice ever, but they don't follow them? <laughs> <That's> <laughs> There, ah, there, ah. <laughs> bro. <laughs> shots taken, shots taken. That, but think about this: like, where do all of our quotes and 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 things growing up? Where do they all come from? Yeah. Our parents. Right. And what is our like? I remember my dad and my mom always like my dad specifically always. No, supera man. No seas como yo. Mm -hmm. So it's like, bro, like they know exactly what we what they're doing, and they still, you know what I mean. So it like mm -hmm. when we do that too, it's just like, bro. Go work hard. I won't be sitting down here not doing <laughs> shit either. And it's like your team now, right? If you're gonna be this part of the team right. and you're you're gonna carry this type of weight, I expect everybody else that's in this same team carrying your own weight. And if you can't do that, bro, I'm sorry. You gotta get you gotta get going. You gotta set up a high standard. Yeah. yeah. You gotta put a high standard for them to, you know, overcome that, overpass that. Yeah, that's that's what I'm doing with my kids. Cha champion mentality, bro. There's how you said and we're Latinos, Hispanic, you know, any any race, bro. Like, mm -hmm. you don't have to be the product of your environment. You have a choice every single time. That's you true. can either make the choice to be somebody or you can make the choice to be like everybody that's not doing anything. Yeah. It's up to you, right? It doesn't matter what the age is now because there's, bro, there's 15-year-olds making millions. Right, yeah, There's 25-year-olds making millions. Like okay, we went, we we're in San Diego last time, bro, and we we're hanging out with some NFL players, some some good people, and there's a guy next to us, like 22, made my first million. Oh. Like, bro, yeah. everything is endless. It's up to you. It's all out there, no matter there's where you so come from. There's so many opportunities nowadays. Everything's so like it's there, man, for you to grab, and you know it's just on you to wanting to do it, man. You know, sometimes he. Come across those people's like, oh, I didn't have the opportunity. Oh, it's just, you know, he's rich, I'm poor. I'm like, nah, man. Now it's open. Now it's open for everyone, man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like it's it's um it's there for grabs. Go out there and chase it. You know, it's not like we had it back then, bro. I didn't, you know, all that was. I don't know if you can relate, but I didn't. I didn't. I didn't my parents never took me to the beach. I didn't know the beach until like I was a grown man. I, I didn't know of a good restaurant until was, uh, you know I was older. Uh, I didn't go to Disneyland. I didn't go to the best thing I think was like when I was a kid was McDonald's. Like to me, that was it. You know, and McDonald's I get to have a toy the with the meal. Yeah, yeah. The happy meal. You know? <laughs> Bro, I didn't get my first happy meal. So I bought my own happy meal. I was twenty one. You know I saying? bought my yeah. own fucking happy meal. Yeah, it's 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 different, bro. And it's it's your parents could could be this, however, whatever you want to say about them. But it's really up to you, however you want to be as an adult. Yeah. And an adult doesn't could be at eighteen. It could be at twenty, twenty one. It doesn't matter. If you think you're an adult, then act like it, right? Mm -hmm. You think you can live on your own? Go try it out. Amen. But, hey, once you throw yourself out there in that deep water, it's up to you to swim. That's if right. not, your ass is going to drown. Um, last thing I do want to ask, is there a mis if for everybody watching you right now, right, right. You're, you are you are well-dressed, have amazing cars, <clears throat> you show a happy family, is there a misconception that you think people have and that you want them to know who Abner is if they have one? Um, I really not try to be that guy that I want people to know that I'm this guy because mm. I am who I am. You know, people, I do come across a lot of people like, oh, es que pensé que eras mamón. Oh, I thought you were, yeah. Hey, low key, yeah, yeah, yeah bro. Yeah. <laughs> low key, yeah. No, 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 not about you, but like, <laughs> We've, like, like, we've, we've had we've had people yeah. that obviously we're always out like we're literally always yeah, we're out. out too bro and, and people like sometimes message us or didn't don't talk to us that one time that they see us because like oh you guys look too stuck up or they, and i'm like bro we're we're normal ass fucking people bro. talk to me let's take a shower yeah, for we'll be yeah, good yeah. be my but friend take a shower with me bro <laughs> i get the the, the you know, you think you're all that oh you just because of what you have oh you know but again they don't know the show they don't know what i've been to to where it's to, to be where i'm at today yeah you know what I'm saying? but even now where i am today i'm not that you know i'm not i don't think i'm that i'm i don't think i'm i'm no one i'm just a human being you know what i'm saying so i mean you know just tell people that you know <laughs> i'm a real laid-back cool guy you know that i i, I could get along with anyone anything anytime yeah you know, i'm really laid back man oh yeah, man i i, I want to appreciate you for for making time for us, yes, they, sir. Sitting down with us on on one of your first 
non-boxing type of podcast, talk about a little bit more life. And another thing I got to say, because I see it a lot on, on the comments, because uh, I do a lot of interviews, you know, or well, obviously, uh, especially on TV, like, and they always see me with sunglasses. Like, oh, I said, pinche mamón, siempre con lentes. And a lot of people don't understand. The reason I wear sunglasses is because of my two detached redness. So the, the, the light, the, the brightness, it, it fucks me up. I, like, I have to squint. Like, the brightness really bothers me a lot. Yeah. So I, if, if I were to take off my glasses, you, you'll, you'll be like this the whole entire um, interview. Yeah. And you know, I don't want to show that face. You know, the whole, yeah, like I was saying. <laughs> Homeboy was mad the whole interview. Yeah. I was he mad the whole was time. Mad the whole interview. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, it really bothers me. Yeah. So I wear glasses, sunglasses in all my, pretty much all my interviews. And even on TV, I'm on TV. They see me with sunglasses. Like, what the fuck is, you know, that guy always wearing sunglasses. He thinks it's too cool. Like, you know, like, they all see me walking to restaurants or they'll see me out in the street with sunglasses. Nah, the reason I wear sunglasses, and you know, I shouldn't even give this explanation, but I am. I had two detached, detached retinas that I wish on no one, you know, and I uh, have a cataract. <laughs> so the reason for it, you know, I got to wear sunglasses, man. And, you know, again, I don't wish it on anyone. I wish I didn't have to wear sunglasses so much. And again, you know, I look cool. So, you know, <laughs> so. there, there we go. Uh, again, appreciate you, man. And mm -hmm. congratulations on a fantastic career you had. That I mean, it's now after this, still up in the air, just depending <laughs> on when it's ending officially. Yeah, well, we'll be there on the next fight. We'll be, <laughs> yeah. we'll be there to support you, homeboy. <laughs> Ahí de la televisión, güey. Sí, yeah. <laughs> um, but also, and uh, uh, my hat off to you, bro. Of you said you being a pro boxer, but being a professional at being a dad, and you're learning that and giving back to the Latino community and these people that have been once in your in your shoes. And man, if if you haven't yet, fucking subscribe. I don't know what the hell's wrong with y'all, but make sure you show love. And again, appreciate you, man. Thank you uh, for coming you, out. Sir. And shit, toast to life. You know That's how we do, it, bro. Thank you, brother. Ahí estamos. I got one. Uh, you guys got one. Sass. What well, toast to life? Yes, I mean. Dylan, there's a guy waiting. All right, toast to everybody. Make sure you tune in. Me serví como two shots, güey. No, he's serví como cuatro shots. You know what? I woke up this morning thinking this. I swear to God. I swear to God. I woke up this morning thinking this. I said, um, man, I want to do like a, a giveaway mm -hmm. to like, but it's, I don't want to shame no one at the same time. But I want to give a, a giveaway to like, like maybe five, um, you know, three to five people that have never been to like a nice high end restaurant, bro, and take them out. You know what I'm saying? Me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like me. <laughs> Hell, I took it to the taco spot, my guy. <laughs> I actually, I have, bro. I've, I've been to Disneyland once, and that shit was like two years ago. You know, because I get a lot of messages when I go to a certain restaurants and be like, guys, be like. Oh, that looks badass, man. Yeah. I've never been to a restaurant like that. It, bro, it's but, so... But it's, to me, it's like... What, it's so crazy doing? because there's there's people, bro, that they have never treated themselves because they feel like they're just not worthy of it, mm -hmm. right? Like, oh, even going to... There's a spot in, in Malibu that we went to one time after Oxnard, and it it's not, it's not fancy, right. but it's by the water. It's private. Yeah. Fucking a vibe, bro. Chilling. Oh, that one was chill. Yeah. yeah, and in Malibu. Yeah, um, Paradise Cove. Okay. 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 And yeah. I heard literally, it. it's off to the side, bro. No one around. Yeah. And it's just like, bro, like there's times like this where you, you gotta stop looking at the price because you sh you should know you're worth yeah, even that exactly, and more. Bro. And I mean, I'm for other people that like, oh, I gotta take a girl on a date there. Why do you gotta take a girl? Take yourself, because, fool. Yeah. Like, yeah, like. The what's it called? The Amashiro in, in Hollywood. Yeah. Like, bro, like once you get up there, it's not even the food, it's the vibe, but it's yeah. the view. Exactly. It's the view. Getting getting to sit back and, and watch everything. Mm. It's like damn, bro. And then I, I like I like <laughs> doing that every now and then. No, it is, it is true. <laughs> I remember the video from Foods Gone Wild. <laughs> There's a cholo at the top of the I don't know what tower it is in New York. Hey, you know, trying to give a speed like a, a speed like <laughs> I never thought I was gonna be up there. Up here, like, bro, you just took the elevator. <laughs> I don't know if you've seen it. <laughs> it's funny, cholo. It's like, hey, but I'm here. All the all the, everybody out there, legend. You, you can make it if you wanna. You could be up here too. <laughs> like, yeah, I'll just walk up. Hey, twelve bucks just to get up there. <laughs> 
funny shit. Yeah. That, I think, like, here for, like, the podcast, like, we had that first moment when we... We've been, I've been to San Diego a lot of times, but we went to go record with our, now our, one of our best friends, uh, Chris, and he's big in, in the gym influence culture, okay. and we took a chance, bro. We, we wanted to open up a gym, too, bro. Bro, that, the one that they opened up in, in San Diego, the compound. Compound? That shit's Oh, the compound? There. That shit was hard, bro. Yeah. Sometimes you go to sleep. You know what? I, I went to sleep late last night, bro. I couldn't sleep. So I got home, and, and my brother-in-law, he likes that FIFA online. He plays that shit. And, and I'm, I suck. I get fucking pissed when I lose, bro. <laughs> Are you so, one of those that fucking breaks the TV? Yeah, yes. bro. So I get there, and he's playing, and I'm like, I'm hungry. Wife is asleep already. Everybody's asleep. I'm like, you know, it's past a little bit past midnight. I'm like, yeah, I'm hungry. So I went, you know, to... I, I had, It's been a while since I had the, the taco, the Jack in the Box uh, taco. <sighs> I love it's those, bro. It's a match, yeah, bro. Yeah, so like it's been it, a while it, since I had those. So I it, went across the street. I had those. Bro, munching on those. And then my brother-in-law is like, hey, you want to play a game? Fuck it, you know? I play. Bro, I lost 4-0. I was so mad, <laughs> man. I was so fucking mad, bro. Hey, I wanted to break the control. <laughs> Here's a fucking Nah, game. bro. Honestly, we, like, sometimes, like, we'll go TikTok Live. But, like, our TikTok Live is, like, night hours through, like, 12 a.m. type of oh, shit really? to, like, 2, 3 in the morning. Music is blasting. Oh, there's there's that TikTok lives. I don't fuck with TikTok. I don't I don't use it much. Well, I don't for have it. I don't for know. for us that started, bro, yeah. like our ongoing platform was was that. So right. last year around this time, we were sitting at like a 10k, bro. We we're celebrating 10k. Oh shit! That's right up, right yeah. now we are 226,000. So it, it's bro, but it's been a, a right. line of work, right. and we started getting into like TikTok live, and it was like. Oh shit, like everybody doesn't sleep, fool. Like right. we have like a hundred, two hundred people just fucking one, sending money, two partying, three <laughs> take shots. So our dumbasses fucking follow us. Right. All right, if we get a twenty thousand likes, we'll take a shot. Right. No, that shit happened like four times. So we're just like <laughs> fuck. All the next day all crudos and shit. Yeah, like yeah. But, when was the last time you guys did this? Damn, like a month ago or yeah. more. Yeah, cause it, we've been we've been trying to establish out there with like San Diego. So like our guy Jose, um, on his IG handles your social media. So he does content for business people and individuals, right. like base for you. Like if you're gonna do your restaurant, you want to talk about it. Like he he provides that service. So he's been like with Grand Cordon and shit like that. Okay. Um, and we just went to actually his live podcast that he recorded with. Uh, two days ago on Wednesday. All right. Two days? Yeah, Wednesday. So they talk about, like, media, bro. Like, how do you leverage your media? How do you how do you go from doing content to documenting? Mm-hmm. So, like, even my compadre, I told him, I was like, oh, bro, like, he's coming. And he's like, oh, ask him about, like, his restaurants and stuff. I was like, be a good, but a good idea. Right. But you 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 said you just you I just, just sold, sold it. it. Yeah, I just sold my restaurant. I had mm-hmm. it for a little bit over a year. It's tough business, bro. Tough industry. Yeah. They, we were going yeah. to like your IG and stuff, and like, bro, like friends with Mr. Temple. We'll see yeah. Mr. Temple tap yeah, in. Yeah, been um, Jimmy and stuff like that. And I was like, that's so crazy. Like, apart from like boxing, bro, like, yeah. you have like a whole. Yeah. Well, you know, once you get this money, you want to invest or you want to put it everywhere so you can, you know, make, you get some money, more back, you know? Yeah. So, um, a lot of uh, a lot of things that are out there, and especially when you see your friends being successful at certain things, they're like, "Oh, it's probably easy," but it's not easy, you know. What I'm like these guys have, you know, like my boy Misael that has the Kulichi town. They started with the Kulichi town. That's Mama por Dios, and yeah. like one day I'm like, "Oh shit, this guy's doing it. What's up? You know, I got money. Let me invest." But you know, they started from. I yeah, know, actually, I I watched so, Misael's like one of his first podcasts yeah. when he talked about, you know, doing sushi yeah. in the back of a truck yeah. and providing that service, yeah. and then it turned into Kulichi. Yeah. And then Kalichi turned into this whole franchise, and then, boom, here we go, Mama Por Dios. Yeah, uh, it's the same type of food, just in a fancier name. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, I mean, you know, uh, La Carniceria, the guy, my boy, Luis Laca de La Carniceria. Huge. Sushi Loco, that's another pine tree. He's got we, a great we, story, bro. We actually, uh, <laughs> 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 so my my dad's business is pest control so okay. we 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 kill bugs we service you restaurants guys the restaurant we service the sushi locals oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah so we ser- service the downy one yeah. the la puente one and the pomona one that's the homie i've been on for years too man he's got a good story too you know he was locked up for many years 
He did for trafficking. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And he ta- he's, he's open about Started it. Started from the bottom, yeah, now we're here. Like, viejo, yo estaba moviendo my chin, boom, boom, boom. We ended up locked up doing years, yeah. and we got out, but nothing. Same thing, pasó con un carrito, and this and that, and boom. Yeah. You know? Like, there's a lot of, you know, Latinos out there that are doing it. No, you know? for sure. Yeah. Bro, for sure. My compadre from Sinaloa started doing, like, the car parts, like steering wheels and lights out of a little shed, bro, living with his, with his sister-in-law. Or right now, multi-million dollar company, dog. Like, in Amazon, Walmart, his own personal store. And you would think, oh, this one has a lot of people. One man show, dog. And I'm trying to tell him, like, fool, like, you got to, like, go a little bit. Like, come on, let's. He's like, fool, like, this is, I don't know. But, like, we get drunk to the max. But but, but that's so crazy, bro, because, like, your the storyline that, that you have, it's not boxing anymore, bro. Like, yeah. I know, I know that's one chapter you you want to fucking right, close, right, and right. like it's itching at you. But, bro, like, see everything else you're fucking doing, bro. Like this, this is only like that's, two hours, two yeah, hours of knowing you, yeah. and it's like researching you is it doesn't do it justice. Hearing it from you, it does it even more. But it's like your gift, bro. Like, there's a bigger gift because I can't say I started at 15. You can't say you started at 15. We can't say we started an empire that young. Right. Continue, you out of 11 kids, bro. You're, yeah. you're this, it's your losses weren't losses because there were lessons, right? right? Your wins were your wins, and everybody saw it. But your biggest win was you coming back from the first detached retina and the second one. Because mm-hmm. to me, watching and when I seen you coming back last year, I was like, damn, what the fuck? Like, he's coming back, like, that's crazy, but. It's again like that win is the win is you deciding to come back and putting your life on the line and now the winning is, the winning is the, the fact that I'm still standing huh yeah because yeah, I, I think think I think maybe what goes over your what goes over your head bro like Dylan was saying is not the fact that you're in the ring and you're winning it's the fact that what if what if there's young boxers which there's the hundreds and thousands of boxers mm-hmm. that been following you like damn that guy inspires me. He you know, gives me hope. It's crazy because, um, what was it? Uh, let's say like two weeks ago, two weeks ago, I was in, in New York, right? I went to New York because I was calling this fight. It was uh, Tim Sue against uh, Tony Harrison, right, through uh-huh. Showtime. And um, you know, my, my, my boss, Steven Espinosa, called me. He's like, hey, you know, I want to invite you for some lunch. Uh, but, you know, Jermel Charlo's coming too along with, you know, with his family and stuff. So I get there. You know, I've seen Charlo many times, many times. Cool guy, cool fighter, you know, the two brothers are twins. And he saw me this. I'm like, yo, what's up, champ, man? I look up to you, man. I, I looked up to you so much, you know, when you started. I remember your gym. I remember this. I remember your cars. I remember, like, this accomplished fighter right now, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And for him to say that I looked up to you and I, and like, you don't know who's watching, bro. You know what I'm saying? So I you don't realize that you're a motivation to people that you didn't even think that you're a motivation. So I was like, oh, yeah. shit. And even my president, Steven Espinosa, was like, he motivated you? Like, you <laughs> like you looked up to him? Like, like, not in a bad way, but he was, like, thrown out. Like, you you looked up, like, yeah, man. Like, yo, Abner, you're the badass, man. How you treat your kids, how you, you know, you're always with the family. Like, that's what's up. I'm like, oh, shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you, you, you honestly, you, you never know, bro. We went to that, on Wednesday, we went to that, um, to, it, it was like a live podcast slash Q&A. And we just went there like, oh, support our boy Jose because he's right. coming from San Diego. It's in Chino Hills. Let's go show love. And I literally decided this in the morning. I was like, well, I got time, dog. Like, let's go show up there, and then we'll drive out to Ventura. Right. And we showed up, bro, and then, like, people, dog. Like, people just, hey, bro, like, we've, we've been watching you guys. Like, man, you guys are doing this in the podcast. I'm like, what? Like, we didn't, we didn't, like for once, we didn't say hi to anyone. We just sat down. We literally time. just sat down in the back. But it's like, bro, you never know what. Who and when people are watching yeah. you and yeah, sure. whatever craft you're doing. And even then, bro, like, these guys are, like, successful in their business. And we gave them tips, like, yo. And he was like, bro, you, fuck, you guys are fucking legend. And Jose, having, like, someone like Jose with us, too, like, he was like, hey, in a year, bro, 100000 No doubt. Like, keep going. Yeah. And then I, uh, when we said yes to this, and when you said yes to this, I sent it to him. I was like, yo, my guy, look. He was like. Nothing but he tells a life, bro. This is gonna be huge, because it to us is like I we played soccer, right. we played sports, and it's like that competitiveness. Yeah. 
I want to be the best in this shit, dog. Like, I want to be, we may not have the big production like everybody else, but we're impactful. That's right. So I was like, don't get me, don't get me wrong. Like, we can speak both, English and Spanish. But when we talk about our Hispanic, our, like, bro, we live in this still. I still work for my dad, bro, because he doesn't know. And he never knew anybody but him working hard. I'm his only son. I got to do this without a doubt. Like, hey, I got you. But when this is paying off, and now you don't got to work anymore, but now it's all of us. So it's just like him the same way. And for for me, it's just like coming from Hispanics, Baldwin Park. No one comes out of Baldwin Park hmm. to be able to do this type. And, oh, you guys are doing it? Nah, man, not yet. But we get to sit down with amazing motherfuckers yeah. that are having a voice and doing it. So it's like, bro, like to, to hear you tell say it to yourself, like, oh, you don't know yet? Like, yeah, this was 37, accomplished, <laughs> drives one of my dream cars, Lamborghini, and has investments and has family and has all this. And he still, still so it's just like, damn, bro. So it's just like, damn, when, when, when is that like accomplishment? Like, when do we feel like, oh, man, I did it, dog. And it's like, maybe it's the Hall of Fame. I don't know. Maybe it's, uh, maybe it's you coming out on your own terms. Even the last fight, as, as much as you're saying, like, maybe the last fight wasn't even on your terms. Yeah. It's just, you're like, all right, I got it done. You know what I mean? Got it done, you know, because I won't. I, like I felt like, all right, I got the. I'm gonna get. I'm gonna give him the shot, but I didn't even train that good. You know, if I would have given him 100, I would have knocked this guy out easy. I almost had him in three rounds, and not, that's not me. Just you know, just, you know, thinking that I'm all that, but I. But it's there. It, it's, it's documented, progress, bro. But, it's um, there. But yeah, man. If I do decide to come back, you know, it's gonna be me 100 percent focused, and just, believe me, it's gonna be. It's going to be a statement. And I think that's what I need. Like, boom, like a statement. I knew I could do it. Boom, I told him. I'm down. You know, and the, throw the mic, but throw the gloves. <laughs> drop the gloves. And it's like, Shit, it's going to be like a fucking creed, food. Like, just walking down and everybody just. Oh, Even if. It was good, man. It was really good. Huh? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay, okay. The last one. The, last the one, OG yeah. one. Yeah, yeah. No, but I just, bro, like, there's three losses, bro, in, in uh, Long ass fucking career. That's crazy. Thirty thirty six wins. Thirty six wins. Thirty six wins. Threes. Three one tie. Draw. And Fifteen knockouts. We actually, when we podcasted with with our one of our guys, Duno, last year before Easter's, literally around this time, we're like, "Damn, this is a celebration. This is the first big influencer we've ever sat down with." Da, da, da. Then we went to Ola in West Covina. We ran into Leo. <laughs> Oh no shit! <laughs> and then we fucking started. Cool kid, we, we started fucking partying with with Leo and his and his and his entourage, his homies, and I was like, "This is a chain of events, dog." Like we just did this, and now we're here. Like, it's, yeah. it's crazy. really cool, really soft spoken. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, young as he going in. Yeah, yeah. he's cool, man. Like, it was cool. And then the Robert, when I seen it, like too, like coming back with Robert Garcia, like who was an old. Oh, that was an OG, man. That was an OG. Oh, yeah, I yeah, think, yeah. was it his first gym, like, at Oxnard? Oxnard, yeah. He started off Oxnard. He was a fighter, too. He was a world champion. Yeah, yeah. fucking crazy. And then his son, his son, too. That's his brother, Mikey Garcia. That's his oh, his brother. Yeah. Fool, that's the <laughs> Two. What was this? Especially boxing. Yeah. Two. You don't? I really, I don't watch sports at all. That's stupid. But you're watching the tank fight, right? Hell yeah. Uh, Who are you going for? That's, I got tank. I got tank. I got tank. 